guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Monday, July 1st. July is already here. That's weird. Uh, but we have plenty of Celtics stuff to talk about today because I slept in today for the first time in like a few days because I was out this weekend with some friends and then I stayed up late last night to keep writing. Uh, and Woj decided, you know what? Jack's sleep. Celtics news time. And so we're talking about it here. Uh, ready to rock. Sam, how you doing? It's been a day. Uh, roller coaster of a day. We've got all of it ahead for you. We have uh, the Derek White extension, the ownership news, and then we'll go through some free agency stuff around the league, rank our favorite signings, talk about some other news, and we'll get to the rat list. Going to have a great show for everybody listening today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and comment. Tell us what you thought. Tell us what you think of all the current events. And email us, hbtcpod at gmail.com. Yeah, subscribe. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers, which is wild. Uh, we'd appreciate it very much. But – Let's start with Mr. Derek White signing an extension with the Boston Celtics. Hold up. I'll pull the graphic up. I know was, I know Woj tweeted it out, so I'll put it on the screen for y'all. But for all those worried about Derek White potentially not being on the team, et cetera, et cetera, worry no more. Four years, 125.9, effectively $126 million extension for Derek White. Comes out to around a $31.5 million average annual value. I feel like that's very, very, very fair money for a guy like Derek White. Um, <clears throat> Noah and I did the free agency stream yesterday, and she said, I feel like I would pay Derek White more in a four-year deal than Paul George right now. And I thought that was a little crazy. Like, I, I get it. As a big Derek White fan, I get it. I think that's taking a step too far. But <clears throat> 31.5 mil for Derek White, especially with the context of you can't, like, it's not like you're going to add anybody else outside of him. Perfect deal. Great player. Deserved. Shout out to Derek White. Yeah, I mean... We, we all agree, like, he deserves it, especially, like you mentioned, some of these other contracts going around. This feels like a bargain deal. This mm -hmm. feels like you're getting a tremendous value with that cap slot, despite paying him the most amount of money you could have possibly paid him in this situation, which was 31 and a half per year. But it gets done. It gets done a year before it necessarily had to, even though this felt like it was the ideal time to get a, a new contract for Derek White. He could have waited a year and tried to test the waters and garner a little bit more money, and he didn't. He decided he liked being here. He decided he enjoyed being a part of the team. He likes the city. And this really felt like something we were on a collision course for, uh, really, for two months, three months. We yeah. had like kind of like the heads up that this is the time for it to happen. Then when media day happened for the finals, they asked Derek White about Boston. He's like, I love being here, blah, 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 blah. Then once the season actually ended, they win the title. Reports start to trickle out from both sides, just kind of like Celtics really want to keep him around. Derek White seems happy here, and both sides are going to work towards a deal. And now today you finally get the notification. It's done. Everybody throws a party. And the Celtics have five of their top six locked up for the foreseeable future. I guess Horford's only next year, but. How much longer is he going to be locked up? For? True. Just waiting on the yeah. Tatum extension now at this point, which also feels like a guarantee. For sure. I mean, like I said, Derek White's worth this amount of money. How well he's played throughout his time with the Celtics. I'll take it off the screen now. Um, he's a $30 million player, and that's not crazy. I remember the first, like, I don't want to say discussion or whatever, like, like the first um, thought of, oh, this might be a $30 million play player. I remember it was me, uh, Bobby Kravitsky, and Cam to bat to buy. I went to the driving range, and we were talking. And as we were there, DeJounte Murray signed his extension with the Hawks, and that was like $30 million a season. And we are like, wow, that's a lot of money. And then we were thinking like, okay, but the CBA is going to come in. That's how much players are going to be played. And we compared it. It's like, okay, who would you rather have on your team right now, Derek White or DeJounte Murray? And it was like, eh, I guess that's fair. Like, DeJounte Murray's probably a bigger body and probably can hit, hold up a little But Derek White's I mean all defensive two in a row he's a better shooter like probably Derek White and now Derek White gets an extension for a little bit more like the the, the slimmest of margins more for what De, uh than what DeJounte Murray signed in Atlanta with you have to imagine the Tatum one is coming if not maybe next summer so he can I, I don't know if he'll make more money next summer I think he's fine either way so it doesn't actually matter so he can sign it whenever but um you, you, like that that is the most obvious 
extension of them all. So you have to imagine it'll be here eventually. Um, and yeah, past that, like shout out Derek White, you keep the core together. Everyone's on the team moving forward. The only other one that you could probably see this summer outside of Tatum is maybe Sam Hauser. John Hollinger mm. had some rumblings of that, maybe uh, getting done this summer. And then, I mean, if you get Tatum and Hauser, it, well, first, if you just get Tatum done this summer, that's the first six locked up for the foreseeable future, plus Pritchard, which is incredible. And then you also resign Nimi and Cornette and all that stuff. If you get Hauser done too, that is your top seven players in the rotation who that was your playoff rotation locked up for at least the next two years. And that's an incredible feeling as a championship team. So shout out to the Celtics for getting this job done. Shout out to that motherfucker, Brad Stevens, man. Like, come on. Like anytime they do something and, and this isn't even just cause he got the extension done, but getting Derek white in the first place. Like I was writing a article for um, <clears> the <throat> Hornet side, right? For Swarman Sting this morning, or I wrote it for this morning, last night. Uh, and it was basically like the full details of the Gordon Hayward trade just finished now. And because there was a 2024 second round pick in that trade. And so like they didn't see the labors or the, the fruits of whatever of that trade until now. But what I was like finding through that is like the only reason the Celtics got Derek White is because they traded two second round picks to create an exception. And then in that, that exception, they got Josh Richardson, and then they extended Josh Richardson, and they flipped him into Derek. Like every move Brad Stevens has made has led up to this championship. Like it, it has been a slow methodical process of I'm going to make this move, but also look two moves ahead and get the right piece into place. And, and so the fact that he's able to get this four year extension done with a guy who has become like, I don't want to say the poster child, but like the pinnacle of what a role player should be in the NBA. Like th this is what a high level role player slash starter slash close to an all-star should be at the NBA level. And Brad Stevens found him and inked him to a four year deal. Yeah. Um, knocking the extension out before the season is really important too, because you eliminate the whole, it, what's his motivation? Is he going to leave? You know, probably creates a little bit of an uncertainty amongst the locker room. If you're just sitting there thinking about it all season. So Brad Stevens knocking this out this year in 2024 is massive going forward. Also just to pile onto the Hauser extension. I believe when we learned that Hauser was going to opt in, we also learned that the two sides are going to kind of work towards an extension by in the coming weeks leading up to July 9th, I think they said. Mm. So just keep your eyes out for that if you're listening. Love that. Shout out, Hauser. Shout out, Derek White. And like I said, shout out that motherfucker, Brad Stevens, man. <laughs> Beast. Um, all right. We interrupt the rest of the pod to, to be here uh, because Jason Tatum decided to sign his extension with the Celtics. About what an hour after we recorded, hour and a half. Yeah, it must have been. For I mean, you guys have seen it if you've looked at Spotify or wherever you're listening or watching on YouTube. Like this is a long podcast already, and we have to jump in now. <laughs> Devastating. And, and had more stuff, uh, but obviously, very very good thing. Um, Jason <laughs> signs his max contract extension with the Boston Celtics as first reported to him by Mr. Chris Haynes. I know. I saw that. That was huge. Yeah. Big scoop. However, unfortunate for Chris Haynes, I believe right. the details are a little bit wrong. I think it's 314, not 315. However, we'll give him the pass because this is a giant, giant breaking news thing uh, that Chris Haynes did break five year, 314, I think million dollar super max attention. It's the largest contract in NBA history going to end up being on average around 63 million per year. I, I believe that's probably why Chris Haynes got confused because 63 times five is 315, but I think it's technically 62.8, which is so regardless, Jason Tatum back with the Celtics through the 2029, 30 season, I believe five-year contract extension going to be in Boston for a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, if this didn't happen, it would be more newsworthy than it happening. I, I think we all kind yes. of just, assumed there would be no reason for Tatum not to sign this, especially in today's NBA where players will fucking sign anything. They're just signing a contract to play in the NBA. These contracts actually don't mean as much anymore. I suppose it means a lot more in this case. They just want a title. Uh, the team is built to succeed for years to come. There's not really any evident reason why Tatum would want not to be here, but players will sign this and then be like, hey, trade me. You guys already paid me, but just just trade me. So anytime a Supermax extension is not signed, that is a big eye opener to whatever issues are going on and whatever franchise offered the contract. And clearly with the Celtics, despite the sale happening today, 
don't have any issues. No, they'll be fine. Um, Jason Tatum's a damn good player, deserves every penny. I don't think anybody's going to question whether or not he deserves a contract, et cetera, you et cetera. Be surprised. Um, well, people on Twitter and in the replies of all the, the big tweets. Like, scroll down. Let's see what people have to say. Anyone who actually enjoys Celtics basketball and is a real fan of the team understands and knows. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the CBA rules don't apply for the Celtics. This guy doesn't know how the CBA works. Uh, Luca Sun, crazy thing to say. Tatum and Brown, just a lot of money. Uh, 80 over Tatum. Buckrack Sports doesn't know how to do math. 100 million peers, insane. Doesn't know how to do math. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah. A lot of people <laughs> struggling with the calculator. Yeah, people don't really understand how math works. But yeah, Tatum extension. I don't know how much there is to say about it. It's like, duh, nice that it happened. Uh, shout out Brad again. I mean, I don't know when in the pod is going to go in. I'll probably put it in right after we talked about the D White extension. Um, but uh, Brad Stevens, shout out. Yeah, I mean, five All Star players. They're going to be the entire starting five uh, is going to be under contract for the next two seasons at the very least. You have Jalen and Jason for the next five plus. Uh, Derek White under contract for the next four after like great work by Brad keeping everybody together. Um, this is just the most obvious like layup. Like during Brad's press conference, I guarantee you there's going to be sound that's sound by that's going to be like this was the easiest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Like, what do you want? Like, of course, <laughs> like, duh, no shit. <laughs> but yeah, um, <clears throat> before we go, there was one other thing I saw from Adam Himmelsbach, which I think is at least worth noting because it just came out like a couple minutes I ago. Know exactly what this is. Uh, Celtics co-owner Steve Pagliuca you guys are going to hear us talk about Wick selling the team in like two minutes whenever we finish talking about this it's just we had to cut in here to talk about this uh, statement from Pags I'm grateful and thankful for the 21 year partnership I have enjoyed with Wick and Irv Grosbeck the Epstein family and all the incredible Celtics investment partners <clears throat> it's been a remarkable run that resulted in two NBA championships for the best and most passionate fans in professional basketball capped off with an amazing duck boat parade last week in Boston Along with the championships, we are most proud of the growth of our community impact efforts and the dedication of the investor group, coaches, players, and staff to helping community members who are in need. Being a co-investor and managing partner of the Celtics has been a great honor and a labor of love. I hope to be a part of the Celtics moving forward and will be a proud participant in the bidding process that has been announced today. So, Pags is still in, 10 toes down. Sounds like he still wants to be a big part of what's going on. And that is a very good thing because as much as Wick loves the Celtics, Pags also loves the Boston Celtics. So great to have him around. Great to have him still be a big face in the organization. It would be great for him to take over. It really wouldn't feel like anything has changed. No. And, and it's important because when, when you look at the whole ownership shift thing, it's like, it's only as bad as whoever the replacement is right now. The problem with Wick leaving is that it's very difficult to find somebody that loves the Celtics and has money quite like Wick does. However, yeah. Pag, up there yeah. <laughs> would be one of those guys who would probably fall under that category. Um, but yeah, just another thing that came up, thought it was definitely worth noting. Had to for sure. Up. Is. Um, shut up. Packs would be, would be sick if this whole thing would just like happen. We talk about it forever and it's just like, yeah, actually just, it's just going to be packs. Packs is going to be the owner. It'd be like, hell yeah, let's go. Let's go. Packs. Fuck Keep yeah. I love that. Together. Brother. Yeah. Um, anything else? I, I think that that covers what we were talking about. Yeah, no, I think we'll go back to the rest of the lengthy pod. I had somebody, somebody I went to high school with, shout out Alex. He messaged me, like, we were just chatting. He, he just randomly, like, messaged me. He's like, hey, like, what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't talked to him in years. I played tennis with him. He's like, what do you think of, like, who could potentially buy the team? And I, I got me thinking, I'm like, I genuinely have no idea. We didn't even talk about that on the pod, but, like, I genuinely just have no idea. I don't follow, like, who is rich Not or, like, sports. Yeah, we. I, I have just no idea who could possibly buy the team, like, I mean, and I wouldn't even know like how to search for something like that. Like, what am I supposed to do? Richest guys on the planet? Like, what? How am I supposed to find that? Like, that's you could crazy. win like Powerball, and you couldn't buy the team. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, it's impossible to project. Like, you'd have to look. I'm sure we'll see rumblings in the coming days and weeks, but we kind of crazy see. back in the day. You could win Powerball and buy the team, but now you can't. It's very cool. Anyways, we're gonna throw it over the rest of the show. I think you guys are gonna hear us talk about the sale in the next like 20 minutes. So. Next thing, other big thing of the day, Wick Grosbeck is reportedly selling the Celtics. This was the one that came out of nowhere. Derek White, I was asleep for both, so they both came at the same time for me. But the Derek White extension came first. And then not long after, uh, again, I'll pull it up because I believe Woj tweeted it out. Not long after a report from Woj um, surfaced 
stating that the Celtics owner, Wick Rosbeck, uh, the majority ownership group is planning to make the franchise available for sale. The investment group purchased the team in 2002, massive development for one of the sports most valuable properties. Just a giant, like this is the definition of a Woj bomb. King of the fourth quarter tweeted it like, this is bigger than any free agency news that came out today. <laughs> and that includes Chris Paul, which came out at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, Chris yeah. Paul, Paul George, Paul George, Paul George. Say. They came out at 3.30 in the morning. Um, <clears throat> a massive, massive, massive news. Um Wow. Just, <laughs> just no one saw this coming. I, I don't think the, the Celtics put out a statement that I believe Keith Smith tweeted out. I want to, I want to find the statement so I can read that verbatim as well. Um, but, I've got the statement on the sheet. <clears throat> uh, oh yes. Perfect. Um, Celtics said Boston basketball. I wanted to put it on the screen though. Uh, Boston oh, basketball I see. Partners. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're good. Um, I'll just read it. It's fine. Boston Basketball Partners LLC, the ownership group of the Boston Celtics, announced today its intention to sell all shares of the team, the controlling fan family, excuse me, of the ownership group after careful thought and internal discussion, uh, has decided to sell the team for estate and family planning considerations. The managing board of ownership group ex uh, expects to sell a majority um, interest in 2024 or early 2025, with the balance closing in 2028 and expects Wick Grosbeck to remain as the governor of the team until the second closing in 2028. Like I said, big news out of nowhere. No one was really expecting it. But yeah, Wick Grosbeck is going to be... Am I saying that right? I feel like I'm more... I'm, Wick Grosbeck, correct? Is it Grosbeck? Might be Grosbeck. Wick is selling the team. <laughs> that's that's the, the point that I'm making. This... So you weren't awake for it. No, This I was, was not. the ultimate just... Holy shit, they paid Derek White. Yay. To, oh my God, the world's ending. Like, within a half hour. Clay just signed with the Mavericks. Sorry. Oh, he did? Yeah. Clay Thompson, well, I don't know if you read the sheet, Jack. But, uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm teasing. But no, th this was terrible news right off the rip. I mean, I'm terrified. Because... <sighs> It feels like this second closing is going to line up with a lot of the big contracts the Celtics have. Like Jalen, Jason, both going to be very close to the end of their contracts, if not at the end, by the time Wick's gone. Then you have whoever else comes in and, you know, they'll probably be the face of dismantling the team and breaking things up in the end of success with the Celtics. Yeah, so the Celtics currently salary cap, uh, their current books – Drew Holiday will be off the, has a player option for the 2027-28 season. Kristaps Porzingis will need an extension by the end of the 25-26 season. Uh, Tatum will extend before then. Jalen Brown is under contract through the 28-29 season, fully guaranteed. Peyton Pritchard is under contract through the 27-28 season. Derek White will be too. <clears throat> Derek White. They have enough. Is he going to be through? Yet. Is he going to be through 28 or is he going to be through 29? Like it's 29 with a, play, uh, with a player option. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community. If you're looking for promotions, Prize Pick has got you covered every single week. From lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays to help your lineup hit, or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Sam and I use Prize Picks all season long. You guys saw it before all of the pregame shows, but now it's the offseason, so we got to find some other things. Take a look at the Red Sox, Jaron Duran. Never know. He's been pretty good. Might as well take a look at his hits. You look at Caitlin Clark, the WNBA. You look at Alyssa Thomas, the WNBA, the Connecticut Sun, right there. The points, more or less, who knows? They're pretty good this year. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay, so Derek will be guaranteed. under contract. The same as Jalen Brown, but the final year of his deal will be a player option. Um, Al Horford is is going to need an extension by the end of next year. Um, and then, yeah, that, that does it for the Celtics big players. So it does line up pretty evenly with those guys. My biggest thing is 
obviously this is going to be huge for, okay, is the new owner willing to spend all that stuff? You would hope that while Wick is selling the team, that will come up in discussions. Like I, like, I can't imagine Wick just being like, okay, I'm just going to sell this to a vampire who's going to sell the team and not care about the franchise. Like, he very clearly cares about this team. And how old is Wick Crossback? Like, as much as it sucks 58? that he's selling the team, Wick Crossback age. He is 63 years old. That's close. And so he owes it, me a nice handshake for that five year benefit of the doubt. <laughs> it, it gets to a point where you can understand wanting to like, retire spend time with your family like to just be less hands-on because like for, for as hands-off as owners can be like he has been around wick, like wick has always been around the team and you can understand wanting to cash out while realistically like by the time they end up selling the team teams are probably gonna be at an all- all-time high in terms of value like they just are yeah. um and so you can understand wanting to get out all this stuff and and hey you got the job done. 18 delivered handshake. Appreciate it. Thanks. Wick got two titles during his time in Boston. Um, and that's appreciated. You you have to imagine for how much he's cared about the team that he wouldn't sell it to a John Henry. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to imagine he wouldn't sell it to a group or a person or something like that. Not willing to spend. Um, and for all the jokes we make about Matt Ishbia and like the controlling stuff, like, he spent money like the Suns ownership sold it to somebody who was willing to spend and dole off of the team. He didn't spend the money well, but the Celtics have Brad Stevens. And so you have to imagine Wick will sell it to someone who one is willing to spend and two is willing to trust Brad Stevens and the front office who has done a phenomenal job of orchestrating this team and constructing them into the championship contender they are. And as much as this is potentially lining up, with the end of the Celtics, you know, core, whatever. The other important thing that I don't think is like we talked about is by the time this hits and by the time we get to the the, the breaking point on the Drew Holiday, the the Horford, the Derek White, the Chris Stapps, like Drew Holiday's going to be 38. I don't think he'll be playing that long. Like he probably won't be on the team. And, and so I don't think it'll be a matter of, oh, will you keep Drew Holiday is, will you flip Drew Holiday or 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 maximize that contract spot or how will you then build around the Jays from then? Kristaps Porzingis by that point will be what, 29, 20, 30, 31, 32. Like he'll be 32, so you can imagine he'd probably still be playing. But like, what is that version of Kristaps going to look like? Is he injury prone still? Is he still able to move around the same? Like what's, what's that worth to you? Like Jalen Brown is going to be 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. He'll be in the prime. Same thing with Jason Tatum. He'll be around 30, 31. Like this will be the latter stages of the career. So Wicker Osbeck will be around throughout the, the next, what he called it a six year window today. So like the next four years prime of the Celtics, which is a great thing. And then after that, you're going to have to look at what's next. And I think that's the important part. Like, this isn't going to be, okay, will they continue to keep this core together like the Nuggets kind of failed to do, even though they didn't change ownerships. They just didn't want to spend money. Like, it'll be, okay, how do you maximize the next window of this core? And and you have to hope and imagine that Wick Crossbeck would be willing to sell it, uh, the team, to somebody who will be willing to spend and and keep the same uh, group intact. Or, let me rephrase, maximize what the next, you know, version of this group could look like scary it's very scary to me because i i agree with you like i think wick is going to have the his best interest in mind but also the franchise's best interest like he said it numerous times him and the rest of the ownership partners are celtics fans like they that the name of their ownership group is literally boston basketball partners llc so they are in to make the celtics the best the Celtics can be. He has absolutely walked the walk along with that. And he's spent and spent and spent and spent to keep all of the talent around the Celtics, specifically with this group. He's putting his money where his mouth is. It is kind of funny. The Derek white news came and we were like, Oh my God, like he's really doing it. He's spending. And then it's like, actually see ya. But (laughs) yeah, that's not exactly the case, but it's what I immediately thought. But ultimately you have to really hope that you get a good owner next time because you just see right across town with the Red Sox how much a bad owner can fuck everything up and make it miserable. It over. You got people say it and sell the team. And owners like that that are just in it to spend money ultimately are not going to be good for the product. They're just not. Yeah. You see it all over the place. Like, for example, the Arizona Ice Tea guy, he was talking about how he never wants 
those cans yes, to surpass that. 99 cents because that's Respect. essentially the purpose of his brand is to be affordable. Mm -hmm. And like he stuck to that, but he's sacrificing profit because he wants to be the best for the people. Wick Grosspray, he's sacrificing profit because he wants the team to be the best for the fans. He could just own the Celtics brand and people would buy stuff and he could put a shit team out there, but they don't, they, they push it to the max. So you have to really hope that you get a good one going forward or it's going to be some dark years to come. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I think the important thing to note as well in, in the context of this is like how dark can the years be if they're willing to bring back Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum? You have to spend that money anyways. Like the cap is going to grow and you're going to have room for at least two max players under the cap anyways. And you have to imagine those will be the two guys they choose to keep around. Um, and even if they're not, you'll you'll definitely keep around one of them and and flip the other into valuable offsets to help the other, uh, like whatever. But regardless, you're probably not, you're definitely not going to have all Horford by that point. You're definitely not going to have Drew Holiday by that point. You might not have Kristaps by that point, purely because the injuries are really catching up to him at this point in his career. Clearly you have to assume you'll ha still have Derek white. And so if you can build around a team of probably Tatum Brown and Derek white, you're going to be a good team regardless. It's just a matter of if you'll be willing to spend to put the extra stuff over the hump. And I, I think this is also important. I don't want to call this lightning in a bottle, but it was like, crazy impressive that brad was able to put this number of this caliber talents on the same team at the same time like this is not a normal thing like 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 I, i'm not expecting the celtics to have five all-star caliber guys on their team for two decades now like that that is just that that is an on what's the word uh unreasonable like line of thinking to expect them to have that because like that's not a thing teams have like the only other team that's had something like that in the last two decades has been the warriors and they didn't even have five all-star caliber players like Kevon Looney and Andrew Bogut weren't out there making all-star teams. Well, Bogut did at one point. I actually was Andrew Bogut ever an all-star. <clears throat> I'm getting off track now, but I don't think so. You get the point. Like th this is not a, a way of constructing a team that, that is, is normal. And, and so if you can build around Tatum Brown, Derek white and role players, you'll still have a chance to win a championship. It's just a matter of willing to spend to keep those three together. And then also being willing to spend the MLE also being willing to spend on extensions to keep a guys like Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser around. Like th those are the fringe stuff that I think is going to catch up to new ownership that we're going to have to see. But at the very baseline, like I don't think this is reason to panic necessarily. And, um, especially not in the immediate future because you still have this core for the next four years regardless. Um, the only like potential bad thing that I, I don't want to say worry about, but like popped into my head is the, the first process of the sale is going to happen in the next one or two years. Right. Correct. So we're going to see the first, like, okay, this is who it's going to go to. This is what's going to happen. Um, and first of all, the fact that they said maybe in 24, maybe 25, either means guys are most likely that, people are going to flock to buy this team or wick already has people in mind who could want to buy the team but regardless of what it is the thing that i potentially worry about the most is even if wick doesn't have somebody in mind which again he might and he might not whatever is if he is selling it in this world that i don't think exists if he ends up selling it to a vampire like like somebody who is not willing to spend who wants to, to sell who doesn't want to spend all this stuff right um which again i don't think he'll do my only concern is that that person wants to trade pieces before the window closes in 28 to set up to not have to pay taxes. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he wants to trade players before then. So he won't have to pay the taxes once they get there again. I don't think that'll happen. I, I don't think that is how it's going to play out. I think we will one sell it to a, you know, person willing to spend and willing to keep the core together. And two, I think it won't matter at that point because Drew Holiday would be off the books anyways and Chris Tops could be off the books anyways and you wouldn't have to spend at that point because the taxes wouldn't be as bad. But that's the only real cause for concern with this news. And again, I, I just don't think that's a, a plausible think uh, line of thinking to go about it because I don't think that's what Wick Rosbeck would do. But it sucks. Love Wick. Love the way he's been willing to spend, especially in the past few years with the team. Um Came wow. in and told him they had no balls Crazy in the news. conference finals last year. <laughs> Respect that he did. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, Wick. Nah, it's it's sad <laughs> to see him go. Um let's hope they have some success before he leaves. One more, more parade for Wick. Yeah, more success. They've had plenty of success. <laughs> let's get a little more in there. Uh, I agree. Um I, I feel like I have more. 
if there's more I was going to say on it, but I can't remember what it was. So I will close it there. Um, I'm, I yeah, was shocked. Little, like this, this is out of nowhere. A little um, extra to the sheet here. I can read it if you'd like. I just want Twitter. Work? What is it? No, oh. it's about the second apron slash the Tatum extension. Bobby Marks put out a little summary of the Celtics and the CBA restrictions they're, they're going to face. So I'll just read this out loud. Those of you that are curious about all the financial stuff, here you go. Celtics will be well into the second apron this year, but there's no imminent threat to break Boston up, obviously. The Celtics have their top six players under contract, along with reserve guard Peyton Pritchard, and could have Sam Hauser back too, depending on how they handle his team option for the next season. The final or the pressure point instead will come next summer in 25 26 when the final phase of the new CBA, far more punitive luxury tax rates, kick in. Jason Tatum is all but certain to sign a five year Supermax extension this summer. Uh, we know that Derek White already signed one. And should Tatum also sign, the Celtics payroll will be projected to be around $225 million. And with repeater tax payments, the Celtics could approach $450 million in payroll and tax payments, which would set a new record yeah. over what Golden State has. I mean, this goes back to what I said. Like, It is not normal for teams to have five all-star caliber players on teams because of this reason. And I totally understand and empathize with the not my money stuff. But there gets to a point where it's like, yes, not my money, but holy shit, that's an insane amount of money to be spending to keep a basketball team together. And up to this point, Wick Grosbeck has talked the talk and motherfuckers walked the walk too and said, yeah, I'm in 10 toes down, going to spend this money. Very curious to see how that plays out <laughs> once it is $450 million. Me, handshake Wick, not my money. Soon, soon to be not his money, but when this kicks into gear, it will still, in fact, will be, still his, be money. his money. Um, that is a scary thing to think about, and you have to imagine that Brad has already thought of this, right? You like Brad is the genius of all geniuses. Um, like what would it be? Would it be okay? Drew Holiday is getting old, let's flip him into smaller contracts. Is it you know, Chris Stops is getting injured, let's flip into smaller contracts? Like by the time this comes around, what wait, what'd you say? Let me find it so I have. The date's correct. Um, by the time the pressure point comes around 25-26, <clears throat> which I don't know, and I don't know if you know, is this after the 25-26 season or before the 25-26 season? Um, I don't think it says. My guess is it's before with the repeater tax and like okay. that being the season that the final phase kicks in, that's where it will be. So I, I think it's like that season as a whole is the mark. Like whenever, like July... July 1st next year. Okay. Well, my point is it wouldn't surprise me to be to see like by the time that season starts or ends, maybe a Sam Hauser gets traded. Maybe, mm. maybe a, a Peyton Pritchard gets traded. Maybe, maybe like these fringe moves that could bring it down a little bit to keep the top five together happen. Or maybe Chris stops is on the block and they consider, you know, bringing that down for a couple of smaller salaries and really invest in a big, but that you would have to really invest in a big by then. Cause Horford's not going to be around and Horford's money will be off the books by then. Probably. Um, Cause maybe he'll retire after next season. Who knows? Um, maybe you consider flipping draw. like, like a uh, plenty of stuff will be on, on the, the docket by that point to for Brad to consider. Um, but I guess we will just have to see. Um Money is starting to pile up in Boston. And that's that's like I said, that's what happens when you have five all stars on the team, same to get uh team together, because that's not a normal thing. It happens in the NBA. And so shout out Brad Stevens and Wick for being willing to put this team together because goddamn they got the job done. And uh right now, it's all that matters. So <laughs> shout out. Uh okay. Let's go to the email here. Appreciate it. Uh y'all for the emails. Make sure you email us at HBTC pod at gmail.com we read them on every full podcast we appreciate y'all for real quick sending them through yes just for a little add perspective on the end of the wick timeline 2028 celtics spurs pick swap 2029 portland has the celtics first round just just a little added context like if you're the celtics and you're the new owner coming in Probably don't want to nuke the team right away. Well, hopefully I mean, it'll yeah. be set up to to be sustainable because Brad talked about this quite a bit at the press conference last week with you guys, and um, you know you wrote about sustainability. We talked about it on the show last time too. 
they're setting the team up just to be able to work going forward. Now, whether or not that can happen after this edition of the Celtics is another question, but like you mentioned, the moves leading up to the sale official sale are going to really be important. Well, I think the important additional context as well is like, like I said, it's not like, like nuking the team isn't going to be, Oh, we're trading Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Derek white. Like they will, st- it, it, that would just be malpractice. Like the, the, cause the new ownership won't have to pay taxes on a team that just has those two players on it and a bunch of like smaller contract guys to stay under it. Like they will still be a good team regardless in 2029, unless Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum wants to leave. Like if those two guys are on the team, which I project they probably will be in 29, You'll be fine, and so I, I don't think it'll matter too much in terms of the picks. At least uh, that's my read on the situation. Like what they this should is do just, is just blow it up and get Cooper Flash. No, this is just a matter of whether or not you'll have all the extra guys to help you be the truly dominant powerhouse. Which realistically, like even if Wick wasn't selling a team, probably wouldn't be sustainable till twenty twenty eight. Anyways, they mentioned the six year, five year window, however long that'll be the the tail end of it. So. Um, I think it'll be all right. Hey, gang, let me tell you a little something about game time. Now that the NBA season has come to a close, you got to get yourself out to an MLB game this summer. You want to go to Fenway. You want to go to your local bar park. Game time is going to get you there. They are an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes tickets easy to get. Prices on game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Who doesn't love using it? I sure do. I used my game time app. To get my dad tickets for Father's Day. And I got a fantastic deal. It's so easy to use. Again, you can get those last minute deals. They have flash deals and zone deals. It's easy. You can take a look at your seats on the app. To see what the view is going to be like before you get there. You don't want to get stuck behind a pole. I'll tell you that happened to me once. It was not fun. Again, last minute deals are fantastic on game time. You can save up to 60% off buying those last minute tickets for sports concerts comedy theater and more download the game time app create an account use code clns for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code clns for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed anyways like i said email time Email us, hbtcpod at gmail.com. We'd appreciate it very much. Let's see what y'all have to say. Uh, I believe RJ has a few to kick us off here. First up, RJ, welcome to Virtual August. If you love someone, let them go or at least decline their option. Afternoon, guys. Do you have any details on how declining the team option on Cato or Brissy declining his player option helps them stay in Boston on better terms or for both sides? Also, out of curiosity, how long does the current CBA run till? Be well, RJ. Well, Cato's back. Brissett is not, and he might look to get more playing time. I don't know about the CBA. How long does current NBA CBA run to? Don't know the question. Runs through the 29-30 NBA season. So, but they have the ability to opt out ahead of or during the 28-29, following the 28-29 season. So, you have a little while for the new CBA. Well, we can see that the opt-out helped Cato stay. We're waiting on Brissy, which probably won't happen. Um, probably not, but, uh, kept Nimi around. Clearly they like him. Uh, and that's a good thing. <clears throat> Next one. Welcome to virtual August pop quiz time. Ooh, I like quiz. Happy pride Sunday folks. You too, RJ. Appreciate you. Now that the Celtics have picked up, let go, or did the other immediate contract mucking about here are the roster spots from last year. Uh, are the roster spots from last year that are currently open? Oh, here they are. Steve Kylo, O'Shea Brissett, uh, Brissett, Luke Cornett, Xavier Tillman Sr., Nimish Keda, Drew Peterson, two way, JD Davidson, two way. Of the first five, which of the available free agents are A, willing to sign at the veterans minimum, and B, better than re signing our own free agent in terms of the C's, uh, helping the C's win better 19 in the 24 25 season? Be well, RJ. Well, Cornett and Keda are now back. Everybody else on this list is not back, so that means the Celtics would have one, two open standard roster spots because they do have to bring in Baylor Shireman, so he's going to take one of them automatically. Uh, and then Anton Watson maybe would take a two-way deal there or maybe a standard one, so you have to keep that in mind as well uh, when looking at Peterson, J.D. Davison, and, I mean, there will be a third two-way spot available as well. So, yeah. It's good that Nimi and Cornette are back. I mean, we did the video on it. I think it's pretty positive. Like, both of those guys are quality players. They're quality rotation options. And having them, especially with Porzingis, 
assumably missing the first couple of months of this season is going to be important. And Nimi feels like he still has a little bit of an extra rung to climb on the ladder in terms of his skill set. So once he becomes a finished product, I think he's going to be pretty solid. Yes, sir. I agree. I- I'm a fan of Nimi. I'm buying the Nimi stock this summer. As someone who was Cornet over Nimi, which I think is still true, I'm buying the Nimi stock going into next year. Uh, RJ, the greatest vibesman, even in folks, of course it was Luke. It had to be. Not only the first stay ready guy to sign back with Boston, but the first free agent announcement overall. That's being ready when your number is called. I'm overjoyed that both he and Nimi are back with the Celtics, not only for what it means to Boston's uh, the Boston center rotation, but for what it means to the organization and the fans. Red always said the Celtics are more than the team. This carries that torch forward. Winning plays can come at any moment from any direction made by anyone. It's great to welcome back Luke and Demiish, a pair of Celtics champions. Be well, RJ. A pair of Celtics champions. I like the sound of that. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, that phrasing, RJ. Hell yeah. Celtics get two signings with championship experience. Who wouldn't want that? They do. Um, yeah, it's fun. Uh, Noah and I were on the stream when the Luke thing happened, and the reaction was just, ah! I was I was in the I was watching. Did you watch it? Yeah, my plans hadn't started yet, so I was just hanging out, making sure everything was going okay. We and... refreshed right at six, and it was just Luke Cornett has signed a one year deal. Yep. We were like, let's go. <laughs> that was the like you couldn't script anybody. We we were talking about like, well, because teams are allowed under the new CBA to negotiate with their own free agents after the finals. So that could have come at any time. Like they could have done that any time. And so I when it happened, my theory was just like Imagine if like one of Luke's things like that he wanted to happen to sign a one year deal or a minimum is like, okay, I'll sign it, but it has to be right at 6 PM when free agency opens. So I, I am to be the first. first. Yeah. <laughs> just Like, and that is like, that would be the most Luke Cornette thing to do. Just like, I want to be the center. <laughs> like I want to be the first free agency thing. Oh, uh, that'd be so funny. I, I need you to remind me to ask him at media day next year. I, I was going to say, I, I, I literally was going to be like, you going to ask him that? <clears throat> Somebody has to. And I, w- I will. I- if I remember in the moment, I will ask him, like, w- did, did you know that was happening? Like, what was your thoughts? Like, like, did you try to organize that? If you remind me, and if I remember, I absolutely will ask. Because I can just imagine him sitting there like, oh, come on, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Show yeah, because they could have announced something beforehand, right? Like, there was, there was the ability to negotiate with your own free agents before – the 6 p.m. window open for the rest yes. of the league to go at them. So, yes, I actually would not be shocked if your theory was correct. Yes, which is incredible. <laughs> incredible. All right. Uh, last email from Philip. <clears throat> Clear or green lens? Fellows with love and respect in New York and Philly, that's not no all love and going, respect. going to get it done, not even close. Also, they, thank you for putting a metal bomb shelter ceiling on yourselves. I know it's a good story that New York has gone from irrelevant to a top East team, but it isn't going to beat the Celtics. Yes, their defense is now completely solid and their regular season might even win the East. But where are the points coming from in the playoffs? Do they really think Brunson and Randall will outscore the Celtics? Is OG even going to be available? Is there a single legit scorer off the bench? It is going to be beautiful as the New York hype machine in the regular season pump the fans up to crippled, disappointing playoffs on 85 points per game. Delicious New York tears, delicious Stephen A. tears. And Philly finally ended the Embiid era like a sinking ship taking on cargo. Mediocrity is their specialty. So they love, they so love the Tobias Sears. They're banking on it again. 50 mil for Paul Frick and George scoring 19 in the playoffs on terrible efficiency. PJ literally always sucks in the playoffs, which is when Embiid ritually breaks down like a pair of cheap socks. I am sure Philly fans will take it all in stride with respect and dignity. These are the same types of moves the Bucks, uh, as the Bucks getting Dame. The price just isn't worth it. The two eager Knicks and panicking Sixers are now contractually screwed, and I, for one, am happy to see it. What do you guys think? Have I finally put the green glasses on? All the best, Phil. I still think the Celtics are by far the best team in the East. I still think that. There is there's a little bit of green glasses with that, but I respect it, Phil. I respect I respect it. <laughs> well, the thing I'll say about these moves is I wouldn't necessarily compare them to Milwaukee's move because yeah. Milwaukee pretty much <laughs> built out the rival. Now, I'm on the Pistons train as much as the next person, Jeez. but I don't think relinquishing Tobias Harris <laughs> is going yeah. to ultimately lead to this Sixers rival climbing to the top and winning a title. I will say I do see the angle more so with Paul George than Bridges. Bridges was an expensive get, but he's like not really a 
he he doesn't feel like he has like this big window of expectations, right? Like it's not like the most durable player on the planet. Correct. (laughs) Which is important. That too, which is important, especially playing with tips. But with Mm -hmm. Paul George, they're going to be paying him $50 million when he's 39. Hooray. Yes. Um, They offered him a massive contract. I think Phil makes good points about Embiid. I think Max is a really good player for Philly too. So like, they're going to be a real pain in the ass team. I think they're going to be a really good regular season team. And I think the inefficiencies that Paul George had in the playoffs may dwindle away with Embiid out there, but that's a big yes. if is Embiid going to be healthy in the playoffs, you know, all of that. Yep. So you'll see how that one works out. The Knicks feel like they're going to lack some depth. They just lost, lost Hartenstein today, which we can talk about in a second. Big, yeah. um, and that's a big loss for them. But, I still think like the fit is okay. Like Bridges is going to be a secondary scorer for them and it'll take more off Randall's plate. Like if I'm the Knicks, I just don't want to rely on Randall. Brunson has proven he can really score big in big games, but Randall's just like a go out there and pray guy. Like he's the, he's the NBA equivalent of fuck it. The guys down there somewhere, the quarterback throwing the pass. He's like doing a spin move, fumbling around. Fuck it. The baskets up there somewhere. I I think Julius Randall was better later in that season. And I think the Knicks would have been much better with him on the court in the playoffs. And I think he'll be better as a probably third option in New York this year. All that said, like I mentioned, I still think the Celtics are by far the best team in the East. I I do think the Knicks now are probably the best equipped Eastern conference team to guard the Celtics. Like you've got a defensive player of the year candidate uh, in Mikhail Bridges, who will probably get back to more of that now that he's in a space where he doesn't have to be the number one option. Um, you have, and, and as far as the points, like Jalen, let's not act like Jalen Brunson wasn't scoring a million points in the playoffs last year. And Mikhail Bridges is like an easy 20 point per game score. Julius Randle will definitely, for as much as you don't like him, which whatever, like he'll help their scoring and playmaking. And so I think that'll improve their offense by having just another hub out there that they can run some things through. I think the Knicks are probably the second best team in the Eastern Conference now <clears throat> behind the Celtics. I would probably put Philly next and then Bucks fourth, depending on what they look like. But I think, if anything, the East is stronger this year than it was last year. And it'll all come down to injuries. It'll all come down, you know, what six seed makes a run, what team gets hurt, what happens here, this, there, the everything. Like, will the Celtics get hurt, knock on wood? Like, there, there's so many factors that could happen leading up to it. But I, I definitely do think the Eastern Conference is stronger than it was last year, in term, especially in terms of the top end teams. Well, yeah, the the top end teams are for real. Like the Knicks are deep, or at least I don't know how deep I want to say they are, but their their talent is more widespread now. If that makes sense, they they have several guys in the starting lineup that are all league caliber players. Whether that means on the defensive end or the offensive end, now you've got Philadelphia with Paul George. They took Tobias Harris and made him Paul George. And if you're Philly that feels like it's very free. You didn't have to go up any draft capital. You did lose some role guys like Nick Batum's not going to be there anymore, but they ultimately improved. They just lost Anthony Melton too, as we record this. Um, I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting to see where all of the Eastern conference teams stack up, who falls off, who kind of takes a step up. Cause there's room for that stuff too. Like we'll get into it with some of these minor moves, like, some of these teams feel like they're ready to go up and get in the play in slash playoff conversation or, or territory. And they're actually going to do it. Hornets made a move. Sorry. I didn't see that either. I probably need to write the Josh green um, one. Yeah. I didn't see that while we were recording. Uh, all right. I'm still getting the final pieces of the, I didn't realize how much stuff. Oh my God. I haven't looked at my phone in so long. <laughs> I'm looking at these voice notifications like 15 minutes ago. I'm like, Oh my God, I've just been yapping. Um, I'm just filling out the rest of our free agency tier list. I'm almost done. I literally have like two players left. Uh, I have literally every single free agency move up until 15 minutes ago, which clearly, uh, there's been some more since then. Um, how many web peas did you encounter? I've, I found a trick to avoid web peas. I I found a key SB nation sites do not use web peas so i just type in name sv nation site and it comes up in images wasn't it oh so all right respect i, I, I kind of cooked um don't worry about it the web um, peas have perished Rip. can you can you read to me what the what's it called what the move is josh green so 
here's my understanding of the Josh Green thing. Chris Haynes. Official? Golden okay. State is working through details with Dallas. I'm told, quote unquote, a deal is not close at this point. Jake Fisher, <clears throat> okay. The sign and trade framework that will ultimately send Clay Thompson to Dallas has a completed concept that would send Josh Green to Charlotte, sources said, but what goes back to the Warriors has not yet been finalized. So gotcha. That Josh Green thing isn't finalized, but Fisher adds Josh Green is somebody that Charlotte leadership coveted back at the February trade deadline when the Hornets sent PJ Washington. To mm -hmm. I see. Sorry, I'd cough in my mouth. I see. <laughs> so you may not have to <clears throat> yeah. scramble with the Charlotte thing okay. just yet. <clears throat> okay. So I, what you're saying is I don't have to include um, Josh Green in my – tier list quite yet. no i don't think so um okay noted what is the last thing uh, we'll, we'll talk about it now. so thank you for the emails we appreciate it make sure you email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com moving forward we're going to do our free agency full tier list now recapping all the moves of free agency and i have the big tier list here okay um obviously we're going to go more in detail on some moves than others uh, because some moves are simply just like Obi Toppin resigning with the Pacers. Like we can go like two seconds on that. Also, Aaron Holiday, two years, ten million dollar deal with the Rockets. We're not going to talk long about that, right? Like <laughs> obviously, nope, there was like half um, a chance one of the holidays would end up here too. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, now you only have one left. I'm trying to figure out where I left off on this. I think here. Uh, okay. Yes, so a lot of moves, as you can see by all the players on the screen on the YouTube. Um, I need to get Aaron Holiday, and then we will officially get into this. Um, do you want to start top down, or do you want to start Luca Garza up? <laughs> Let, let's go from, like, the lowest. Or you could go in chronological order if you really want to. It doesn't matter. I don't know how to do that. Oh, well, just you know what I'm saying? the like, lowest up. Okay. Because if you um, just, like, happen to have it in, like, a random order, like, there would be... I ordered it in the order I like just read it off of the spot track thing you linked where it's just by the largest salary. I see. Um, gotcha. So we can just do whatever order we feel like it in here. So we can start. Okay. Well, that's. Did it just take out all of the images? Do you see that? Do you see that happen in real time? Did you see that happen? You saw that, yeah. right? I mean, it's not the end of the world because I can just literally go in here and they're all right here in my yep, files. So it's fine. But that, that it, it tried real hard to screw me there. And you all saw it. If you're watching on the YouTube, <laughs> you all just saw what my computer does to me you all, real time. Uh, OK, here we go. We got them all. though. Don't worry. So I'm not I'm not going to mess with presentation mode anymore. So I'm just going to start with Emmanuel quickly because he's at the bottom right here. Um, I think this is all of them, but I don't see Aaron Holiday in here. So this might not be all of them. Wow. I, I can't believe you guys just saw my computer mess with me in real time um that's really annoying um i'm really pissed off now because i i can't see which okay aaron holiday is right there i think we're good Derek jones jr sam uh we'll start there for whatever reason just because it's the first one i saw signs a three-year 30 million dollar deal with uh the la clippers uh, after paul george leaves for the 76ers which we should probably have done first but we'll do that after um Thoughts, Derek Jones to the Clippers. Again, this is one of the ones we probably won't spend a ton of time on, but still. <laughs> well, Derek Jones was a big part of Dallas's run to the finals. Now, whether or not he showed up in the finals is another question, but he did have a good playoff run. He probably overperformed. With that being said, I think if you're the Clippers, this is maybe a little bit of a risky move. You had a little bit of money to throw around with the Paul George exit, and you feel the need to make up <clears> for <throat> it. I would throw it at the C tier. I think I was he's gonna probably going to end up disappointing them a little bit this year based on like, oh, wait, we're not getting the guy that shot like 39% in the playoffs from three? What the fuck? And he's also not going to be playing with Luka where he just has to stand there. Like The setups are not going to be as clean for Derek Jones, but – He's still an exciting defender. He's athletic and he's a freak dunker. So keep your eyes peeled on that one. Yeah, it just doesn't make too much sense to me. Like you, you probably need more scoring and Derek Jones Jr. is very much a, you already have your stars. I'll play off them and maybe it'll work with James Harden, who I kind of forgot was there, um, who I don't even think I put on here. No, he's right there. Um, 
So maybe you have to be. I, I, I'm not a fan. It just felt like it felt like a panic move. You know what I'm saying? It felt like, oh, we got to get somebody. Derek Jones, come on. So <clears throat> the Clippers are in a weird spot now, man. Like <laughs> they are. They have the new arena. They want to sell stuff. They want to sell seats. They want to sell merch with a new branding, and then they lose super Paul cool Derek Jones. Derek Jones Jr. jersey, super cool. They Come better hope he does the dunk contest. Let me tell you, man. Uh, okay, let's do Paul George. Okay, Paul George signing a four-year max contract deal with the Philadelphia 76ers. He'll be paid roughly fifty million dollars by the time he is forty-ish. Uh, four years, two eleven mil, fifty. Two average annual value ish, fifty three. Yeah, it like I think eight tier. You get a third star to pair with um, Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, Paul George for all the shit of he's not healthy. He's never healthy. Played seventy four games last year. Like we had somebody come in the stream, like oh, like the Derek White, Paul George comp, whatever. I know Derek White rested some and had a kid and whatever, but like Paul George played more games than Derek White last year. Like like for all the talk of him not being a durable player, at the end of the day. One, he's somebody who fits in perfectly with the construct they have going on. And two, if he can stay healthy, which I suppose is an if, knock on wood, he's somebody that can help carry the load. Like, no one I talked about this. If Paul George was there when Joel Embiid got hurt, they probably don't fall as far in the standings as they do. So I like it for them. They get a third star. They still have a little bit of money to spend, which they have spent some, and they're putting together a good team. I really like the move for Philly. He plays both sides of the ball. The cap slot is what makes this interesting because when you look at it and I feel like I'm starting to shift the way I look at contracts now, because just looking back a couple of years with the Jimmy Butler, Miami thing and the Lowry part of that too, when they paid both of them and it was like, those guys are old. What are you paying them for? The way the NBA operates now is having big contracts can make it easy to make bigger moves. If you want to give up draft picks because you are able to match the salary. So I don't put as much weight into the, 39 years old, making $50 million thing. However, I still do put weight into that. In the present, A move, A tier move, good move, easy, no brainer move because Tobias Harris left, you upgraded him with Paul George, a better version of Tobias Harris for sure. Like able to create his own shot. He's a real scorer. He can defend and he's going to play that same position. But down the line, you may really hate having that money tied up with Paul George, but they also paid Maxi and Embiid's under contract, and they have a pseudo version of what the Celtics have where they're kind of grandfathered into being able to pay those guys, and they don't really have to worry about, oh, wait, no, we don't have money anymore. Like, that doesn't really matter because you already have the stars. You're not looking to acquire stars. So when you're rounding out mm-hmm. the rotation with a big move, it doesn't hurt as much even if the salary looks like it sucks. Yeah, I think th- this is a move that you need to do if you want to win. And, and respect, I I think it's good. I like A-tier. You happy with A-tier? Yeah, it's <clears> we, can, we can live there. All right. Um, I don't think I included OG and Anobi on this tier list, but that was a while ago at this that point. That was a no-brainer. So, yeah, they whatever. Uh, um, <clears throat> Tyrese Maxey, I think he is on here. I think I did include an image of him on here. Um, This is Where's Waldo? I know it's because I had it in order. And then as you saw, it just fucked me live. Uh, and okay. Tyrese Maxey here. S S tier. You keep your young guy around. He's a phenomenal player. It's no most, brainer. No brainer. Obvious. You need to do a move. Um, as, as you talk about it a little, I mean, not there's not there's much to say. I'll grab a picture on an OB. I'll throw him an A. We happy with an, an, an OB and A feels like yeah. an obvious move. Keep him around, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all, all these extensions are just layup moves. If you already have the guy, you might as well pay him. You don't let him get to For the stars. Agency. For the stars, yes. There's some extensions that maybe aren't a tier. But okay. But. I mean, we can talk about those as they happen. <laughs> but like yeah. keeping like Maxi, that's a key part of your team. It's one of the guys that you need to have if you're looking to build any kind of successful team. Why would you not pay him? The same goes for OG. Like you already had him. You traded for him. You gave up two young players for him. Pay him. Of course you pay him. Like, <clears throat> yes. No brainer. Why would you not? There's no reason to cheap out. Worst comes to worst, you can trade him down the line and hopefully get something back that you feel like it's worth trading him for the Paul George thing for the Clippers. They didn't want to pay him. They didn't want to trade him beforehand. And then they just lost him for nothing. Didn't make any sense. Yeah. <clears throat> no, they didn't. Um, yeah. And then it'll be stays there. Tyrus Maxi up there. Easy, easy. Um, next one. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to pick random. We'll go Obi Toppin, Sam. Obi Toppin signs a four year, $60 million deal. Uh, 15 mil a season. 
weird, fine. I think he's a fine player. I think Obi Toppin. I'm interested to hear this. It feels like they should get a better player than Obi Toppin to play the role Obi Toppin is playing. Like I, he he's fine. He's not a great shooter. He's a good shooter on low volume. He's a good lob threat. Not a great defender. It feels like you should get like a better defender to play that role for a bad defense. I'll give it a B because it's fine and I think he's a good player. But like this is one of the extensions where I'm like I don't think it's automatically S or A for extensions. So I do agree with you where I don't think it's at the same level as the other moves, but this to me was also kind of like a no brainer. Like how could you not? Right. He played. Let me just make sure I'm not saying something stupid. Yeah. With the Pacers last year, Obi appeared in all 82 games, played every single game. He was durable. Obi Toppin on three attempts a game made 40% of his three pointers, three point shooting. Every single year he's been in the NBA has improved, regardless if it's been a very slight improvement or not. And in the playoffs, he was a really important piece of their Eastern Conference Finals run. He scored 10, 11 points a game. He was hitting the glass. And specifically in that Knicks series, he gave them some really nice juice off the bench. Like he was a key piece of it. I think if you're the Pacers going forward, you want to keep together as many of these guys as you can. $15 million is not that much money for somebody like o- Obi Toppin anymore. Like, I don't know. I don't hate it. I think B's appropriate. It's not like knock your socks off great. Like nobody's throwing a party, but everyone's like nodding their head. They're like, yep. Okay, good. Good job. Yeah, it's fine. Um, let's speed run a few of these because we got a lot to go. Um, Eric Gordon. Going on a what what deal did he sign? Was it it was a minimum or was he no one yeah one year three million dollar minimum to Philly, fine B like, good rotation yeah, deal yeah any any qualms with B tier fine. Uh, I think he's a good fit in Philly. I I think he might even be an A tier, but it might be too soon to tell. I I, I hesitate to put any minimum contract signing A tier. For the simple fact of like, eh, I don't know. It just feels like I'll put him a tier, sure, I guess. But like, you think that the Eric Gordon signing was as good as the OG Ananobi and Paul George signings? To an extent, because that, those I, extra I guys, remember. hear me out. These extra guys, the fringe guys are important. The reason why a team like Philly ultimately falls apart is because when Joel Embiid isn't playing well or when, well, he inevitably gets hurt. There really aren't that many guys to step up around him. With the Celtics this year, very, very unique example with the depth and and star power on the team. But nonetheless, even using the big man spot, right, Jack? When Porzingis and Horford had to miss time, you felt confident in Luke Cornett or Tillman or Nimi eating those minutes. There really wasn't a whole lot of angst. And when you have somebody like that, it's really important to sustaining, sustaining, Jesus success gordon is a veteran guy he's been around the block a little bit his athleticism and physical abilities on the defensive end probably aren't quite there but he probably can give philly the shooting they need around somebody like joel that is just attracting so much attention on defense i guess i i guess i i can't put him in the same tier as signing an all-star or extending uh, b, like b is fine but i think it's like a b plus ish like it's, I, it's I a it. good get I get it. It is a good get. It's just there's 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 levels. There's like I don't know. Like it, it's hard to it, it's good. You can find great value on a contract like that, but like unless it's like you're getting I'm trying to think of an example of a minimum player who like completely popped and like changed the course. Like Malik Monk on a minimum averaging like 15 points a game for you. Like that that'll be like an A tier. Like sure. that is something you can predict. But like a, an Eric Gordon who's probably gonna play. I don't know. 15 minutes a night for them, which is good. They'll be a good 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. But how old is Eric Gordon? I'm getting hit with it's gonna be like 34, 35. Yeah, 35 years old, gonna turn 36 next season. I could see a fall off. I don't know. I, I think B's fine. I think it's a good quality rotation piece. He'll be a good player. <clears throat> um, Luca Garza signing a two year minimum deal <laughs> with C-tier. the Wolves. Sam, uh, not, not a Luca Garza guy. It's just uh, fine. fine. Yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> Luca Garza C tier can live with that. Let me add the couple new files that I added here, just so I have them. Okay, bang bang. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein, three year contract with the Thunder. 
almost 90 million, going to be about 29 per season for him. A lot of money for Isaiah Hartenstein, but that's a really good pickup. Like the starting lineup is going to be what now? SGA, um, SGA J-Dub. Caruso, SA, SGA Caruso, J Dub, Chet, Chet, Isaiah Hartenstein. It's, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> it's, it's pretty damn good. I'll, I'm between A and B. It's a really good signing for them. It's a lot of money for AJ Hartenstein. I'm gonna put it. B. I think it's a B. I'm gonna put it B just because that that is a lot of money for somebody who's probably gonna average like ten and ten. A great, a great, impactful ten and ten. That is a lot of money on the books. He's a hard playing player. Hartenstein was really important to what the Knicks did in the playoffs this year. He was a big force on the offensive glass. He was as reliable as anybody to put the <laughs> flip shot up with his left hand and make it every single time that was insane to at, watch in real time <laughs> at the same every time so so here's the thing about the hartenstein deal he falls into the same category as paul george because okc is going to have the ability to resign everybody that's important to them there's yeah. not going to be this weird mix-up where it's like oh fuck we have to decide who to pay like why are we spending 30 million on hartenstein like no if you want to like compete like that's your top priority as an organization this is a good signing for you because it's an extra guy it's a big body that you really missed in the playoffs last year and you're going to be able to pay sga you're going to be able to pay jw you're going to be able to pay chet if you need to keep lord lou dort around you're going to be able to pay him like just keep going down the line like all of their guys are homegrown they just paid isaiah joe too to keep him in town for a couple more years and they paid him like 11 million a season they are not afraid to spend, and they're clearly trying to compete. This probably makes them what the favorite in the West, Jack? Do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think they're probably the favorite in the West. If you can be a favorite over Denver with Nikola Jokic, but yes, I, I think I mean, Denver's favorite. losing people left and right. <laughs> I know, but it's still Jokic, uh, and I think you have to respect that. Um, Tobias Harris, two year big deal <laughs> with the Pistons, um, two years, 52. <sighs> Uh, I think uh, C tier, probably C tier. I was going to say B, but probably C. Like, it's fine. Tobias a lot of home. money for Tobias Harris. Yeah, comes home, whatever. So, <laughs> Pistons, I can see what they're trying to do. People are clowning the Pistons online. This is not like a win now move. It'll probably make your team more competitive this year, having guys that have proven they can be contributing players in the league. Tobias Harris, however, ended in Philly. He had seasons where he's borderline been an all-star. He's not washed. I just think his role in Philly was weird and he got fed up or whatever. He wasn't comfortable with that. Tim Hardaway Jr., another guy that's actually going to be able to score for them. These guys are going to give them options if they don't think the young guys are ready. And I think it might help him take a little bit of a step up, whether that step up is a big one or a small one. It doesn't feel like you're going to run into the 29 game losing streak Pistons again this year. It feels like they're actually doing stuff to try and improve, even if it's little things. And down the line, if you decide you are ready, if Cade takes a leap, which he did sign an extension, if he takes a leap and he's really playing out of his mind, which we've seen good basketball from him, specifically when they were trying to break that losing streak, then you can trade Tobias and take salary back with that contract slot. So it makes it flexible for you going down the line as you're trying to improve. He'll be on an expiring deal, which is a good thing next year. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, okay, let's speed through some of these ones that don't matter. Get them out of the way. Alex Len, one-year minimum deal with the Kings, D-tier. I, I don't know. Like They keep signing him for the vibes, I guess. Respect to Alex Len, but weird. Um, DeAndre Jordan with the Nuggets, one-year deal. Uh, where? The vibes. Really? Pure, I thought you were about to put him right up on A-tier. He's, he's D-tier, too. He's the same no, as Alex Len. It's different. It, what do you it's, mean it's, it's different? It's for it's vibes. I guess, but like, I guess, but like the vibes seem so much better. Have you heard him talk about his relationship with Jokic? Like, you this literally is like a, said, I guess they signed Alex Led. It's for the vibes or whatever. Maybe, well, that's because <laughs> maybe there's stuff I don't know about Alex Led. No, I said they signed Alex Len. I don't know why. Not for the vibes. I don't know why is what I said for Alex Len. Like, maybe he's best friends with guys in the team, but like, DeAndre Jordan, have you heard his conversations about Jokic? I mean, he gasses him up. No, I'm no, sure Jokic goes... has some feedback he gets from DeAndre being a former All NBA. No, no, no. There, there's been a whole thing where he's like, "Yeah, Jokic, uh, I'm now." They call me the Black Serbian. 
uh, because now we just do our, our kisses after every game. He taps me up. He goes, good job, DeAndre. Like, I don't know. There's funny. I guess it's just because I know about it. You're okay, probably right. Put him on C tier then. Okay. I just, I guess this, no, you're right. It's D tier. I just, I like the vibes. I, and I don't know about the Alex Len vibes, but I know about the DeAndre Jordan vibes. So I guess that's the difference. Um, what else can we get out of the way here? Even Isaiah with the Joe, Garza one being on C tier. Now that I think about like the position of the team, like at least he's like on the younger side, right? Like, yeah. You could be like, oh, like, you know, down the line, they might need him and develop him into a bench guy. Like, these two guys are just going to be there to do what they do. You're right. Uh, what else can we get out of the way here? Um, Mason Plumley to the Suns, C tier, fine. Did you right? see like that fucking mixtape? The mixtape's cool. <laughs> he can go there, C tier. Uh, DeLon Wright to the Bucks, I actually really like. I'll put that B if you're down. I, I think that's a really good signing for them. Like, he's, he's going to bring them some defense. Uh, I put sure. that in there, Eric Gordon tier of like, he gives them something. They I just think need. they need talent. So, any <laughs> exactly, anybody yeah. that's proven they can play in the NBA is a good pickup, as is Plumley for the Suns, right? Like, Phoenix has nobody. Their, their team is very, very thin. So bringing in Plumlee, who's proven he can hang in the NBA, is a good signing. And same with DeLon Wright from Milwaukee. Is they seem like they're going through this weird transition, and they don't really know who's what. He's going to be a good uh, get. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Wiggins and Isaiah Joe for the Thunder. Aaron Wiggins uh, signing a – let me ch- double check here. Four years, 47, so around 10 point – or around 11 and a half for him. And then Isaiah Joe signing a four-year, 48, so around 12 for him. Isaiah Joe B. Aaron Wiggins C. Thoughts? I think that's fair. I think Isaiah Joe is going to be a contributing piece for them as they push to win a championship because he's just such a great shooter. Wiggins, keeping him around keeps your continuity with your team. It keeps your depth in place. It gives you a chance to keep him feeling comfortable within the team and potentially taking a step up like we've seen guys on the Celtics do. Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard stepping up in big moments, even though one – Peyton Pritchard signed that contract extension. People around the league probably weren't like, holy shit, great signing. But it's going to be important as the years go on. So both those guys are going to play a key role in OKC. I appreciate both signings. And should you decide you need to make a trade, those are both salaries you can get off of and including trade mm-hmm. to make filler gaps work. Yeah, they're fine. Isaiah Joe played a big role in the playoffs. Easy pot. Uh, easy. That's pie is what I was going to say. Drew Eubanks signing a two-year, $10 million deal with the Jazz. Uh, D, I don't know. Like, why? Like, sure, I guess. Drew Eubanks is fine. Uh, the Jazz signing anybody over the age of 25 doesn't make sense to me. Like, what? what <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You like, have to feel the team. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Same thing. Aaron Holiday, two-year. Uh, he played defense for them, at least. Like, he, he gave him something. Like, you have Walker Kessler. You have so many other guys you want to develop in Utah. At least Aaron Holiday, like, the Rockets have a direction. They picked it two years, $10 million for Aaron Holiday. Fine. Um, Sam, Justin and I are signing a minimum, or going back to the Blazers' thoughts. PC. Uh, that's probably a C-tier signing. It's a young guy that they're looking to keep around, right? Kind of like Luka Garza. I thought you Off hated Minaya. Who am I thinking of? I don't hate Minaya. He Who played a PC. You know, but there's a Rhode Island college guy you dislike who's not you don't think is good. Who's in the NBA? Devin Sorry. Carter, I don't think is like the greatest. No, no, no. no. Main Celtics. Was he in the main? Like he got Oh, like, uh, AJ team. Reeves. That's who I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Manai is fine. Like Okay. I think he played a decent season for Portland last year and they're smart to bring him back. He averaged He didn't actually. Uh, well. <clears throat> he didn't. He was he bad. Uh, he played 34 games, two points, one and a half rebounds, 29.7 from the field, 24.5 from three. Maybe it was the G League that he like had like maybe a decent I, I don't season. know. I remember maybe. seeing something that he was playing okay. G League oh, Justin Manaya. Let me see. G League Justin Manaya averaged if real GM loads. Um, let's see. Nine games, 16 points, 50% from the field, 35 from three. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. Still cool. young, plays defense. Like that's why he was like a draft prospect. Is he was a really good mm-hmm. defender in the Big East. All right, uh, let's see. Let's get through there, some of this other free agency stuff. Um, what else? James Harden goes back to the Clippers um, on a two-year, seventy million dollar deal. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> it's actually an A tier. Good. Yeah, that's A tier. Uh, Just because you can get off of it, you had to do it. You traded for him. And, and realistically, thirty-five is not that bad for James Harden at this stage in his Derek career. Boy. Yeah, Derek White's making 31. Jante Murray's making 30. James Harden, for as much of the shit as like that's happened in the past few years, he's been a great player. He's really good in, in LA. So I think that's a really good value for them. So shout out. Um, Nick Batum signing a two-year deal to return to the Clippers. 
C tier. I'll put it right with Derek Jones Jr. Like, I guess, like, sure, Pretty you're funny. stealing at role players, but yeah, he's just going back and forth and back and forth. Him and Paul George and Harden, like the, the Sixers Clippers pipeline. <clears throat> I guess, sure. I mean, that um, works. Also, they they need the sh- they need guys to be able to play around. Like the they, do, like, they do, they do, they do. Batum proved in the playoffs last year he can step up in the big moments and make big shots and compete still and play both ends of the floor. There was a rumor he was going to go to the Spurs, which I thought would have been a little bit fun, but. Having him on the Clippers will help them compete as much as they can. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Next, uh, Kevin Love going back to the Heat. Two years, eight million for a season. Sure. C, fine. Uh, B, maybe. Uh, C, C. Like, it's whatever. C. We're filling up the C tier. A lot of average signings. Um, Kelly Oubre, two years, eighteen or two years, sixteen mil, eight a year, going back to Philly. B. B or A, he, one of them. That's I, a big key. I, I'll go A. I'll go A. He's really good. That's a cheap deal. And also, who did I make the bet with? Who owes me $100? Who is it? Own up. Is it Bobby? Who got, more, who got more money in free agency? Tobias Harris or Kelly Oubre? Own up. Did I make the or, bet? No, somebody in the chat. I think it was, was uh, it Michael Hilly. Was it Jared? Who was it? One of you. I told I, you. I was like, I hope I hope that I didn't make the bet. One, somebody bet me that Kelly Oubre would get more money in free agency than, than Jack, Tobias Jack's Harris. Jack's trip to Vegas getting a little bump. I'm watching. <laughs> Jack, you take that to roulette, it becomes two hundred dollars. Shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, Kelly Bray, phenomenal value for him. He's probably like a with the way he played last year. Like I came around, I was wrong. He was a more impactful player than Tobias Harris. I hand up. I said it in the moment. I was wrong. Um, probably he got 15, 17 mil. Like like he he's, got a bike he's accident. Damn good season. Um, yeah, eight mil a season for Kelly Bray is great value for a Sixers team that has. Probably can roll out a starting lineup that looks like Tyrese Maxey, Kelly Oubre, Paul George, somebody, and then Joel Embiid. Like that, that's a damn good team. They're gonna be in a good spot. Like that's that's really, really good. Shout out. Uh again, yeah. said it with the Gordon thing. Like this plays into it too. Like you need the other guys to be serviceable players. Like look at Phoenix last year. They sucked so bad and they couldn't find any cons- ironically enough, Gordon was on that team. But they they sucked so much and they really underachieved because outside of the top guys. Not that they fit well together, but they really didn't have a lot of support. You need that if that that's like the new quality thing that really sets teams apart. It's not about the stars as much anymore. It is, but it's not. You have to be able to have the other guys that fit well. And Ubre clearly fit well in Philly last year. That's why he made such big strides and he generated so much buzz at the early part of the season because everyone's like, holy shit, nobody thought this would happen. <laughs> Sorry, the Knicks are tweeting about the Isaiah Hartenstein signing. Uh, Miles the, McBride t- the team tweeted. Account? Oh, like the players. No, 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 the players. Miles McBride tweeted, another black man paid. Love to see it. Uh, and then Josh Hart tweeted, um, you're dead to me, Zay. Never liked you anyways, but congrats on the bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, anyways, next thing. Anthony Melton signing a, I believe, one year, $12.8 million deal with the Warriors. Uh, this is going to be their MLE signing, I think, because they let Clay walk and waived Chris Paul. Um, good player, fits all right. A little bit weird. Uh, probably B. Fine. I think he's a B. He's a good player. He plays good defense. Player. He shoots, he shoots threes. He's going to fit into that offense. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if if you're the Warriors and you're trying to compete as much as you can, these are the kind of players you have to bring in. Steph is still Steph. He's still going to be good. You have to think about what's going to happen with pods this year. Is he going to take a step up? He really had a great rookie season. And then, you know, you're going to get anything from Draymond. Maybe. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe you knock on the door of the plane again. Yeah. Um. Next one. Andre Drummond going back yeah. to Philly on a two year, $10 million deal. D tier. D- what? He already was in Philly and it really didn't work. It did work. He was a great. He was a good backup center for him. He's like the best, one of the best backup centers, and beat his hat. He, he's a good backup center, but like how, like I don't know. I just kind of put him in that DeAndre Jordan tier. Not so much no, that he doesn't no, no, play. Not even close. Not even close. Well, I don't know. I guess maybe he's C then, because with Embiid, what? you're actually going to need that guy to eat minutes. It's not. It's not like he's just going to be sitting there for the. Dude, he averaged, entire time and then play five. He minutes. averaged six points and nine rebounds and one steal a game in 18 minutes for Philly when he played for them. Yeah. I, I think that's a B tier. I think that's a what good year signing. was that? Uh, 21 22. So a couple years ago. 21 22. And he spent so. two years in Chicago playing 13 minutes and 17 minutes, averaging six and six and eight and nine. Who did Philly lose to that year in the playoffs? 
He wasn't on the team. He got traded to Brooklyn in the James Harden trade that year, so he wasn't oh, on the team. Like right. he only he, he was only traded. He, yeah, he was only traded because he was need, like he needed to be traded. Okay, I'll I'll meet you in the middle at C tier. I, I think it's a good signing for Philly. Though. You get a quality backup center for five million a season, which is not a lot of money at all. You get somebody who can fill in the gaps at the backup center spot. Like you get a little bit of insurance. I, I like it a lot. I'm, I'm a fan. I think Andre Drummond's still a quality player. Um, if you put him on the right team. Uh, next one. Chris Paul signing a one-year deal with the San Antonio Spurs. I like. I I think this is really fun. Like I really think this is a really. really I think really, it's fun really too. Where do you rank it? I think on the court B tier, overall A tier. What do you mean overall? What else on the on the court? He's old. Well, listen, listen. On the court, he's old, and so he's okay. only going to give you limited production. But the way he can help mentor and give advice and help Victor Wembanyama develop. Like, okay. I think that brings it to the next level. Like I tweeted out like, and he doesn't Chris, cost that much. Exactly. Him, Greg Popovich helping Wembanyama in the same season. Like think, think of the ways Chris Paul can direct Victor Wembanyama to be in the right spots on the court to get passes from his point guards. Think of the way he can help the point guards that they have, like Stefan castle grow into a better playmaker. Like I, I think this is going to be so, so, so good for their young core. Um, you can put him at DA. No, so. I really like the signing for the Spurs. I mean, I don't know how much Chris Paul has left to offer as a player player. Like, I think sure. he's still a good passer. I don't know if he's going to be a real scoring option for San 11 Antonio. million, by the way. One year, 11 mil. Which is good. Yes. But, like, if San Antonio has some of these younger guys that aren't Wemby take a step up, like, they could be a competitive team for a play-in spot. Depending on how much Wemby is ready to go. Like, you have Chris Paul who can actually get the ball to him. Wemby really didn't get that involved in the offense until they stopped running Sohan at point guard. Yeah. Until they, once like, they stopped right. fucking around, then he kind of got good. So yes. this is a way to get Wemby involved and help him be better. So yeah, I and think it's a quality signing and it's important. There's a reason they did it for what it's worth. He might not have a ton left in the tank, but it's not like he was bad last year. 58 games, nine points, four rebounds, seven assists on 44, 37 splits. Like he's still fine. And, and I mean, realistically, they, if you want to cover up Chris Paul's defensive deficiencies at this point, Wembenyama is a pretty good guy to do it. Good and for if Wemby you want stats. To, exactly. And if you want to maximize the playmaking and the skills Chris Paul has left, having a seven foot five freak is probably a good way to do it. Like he's I, I think he's end though. of career Rondo at this point, stat wise. <laughs> yes. Play style yes. wise, he's still going to be Chris Paul running pick and rolls and taking the mid range pull ups. But like you said, separate the name from the stats, and it's like. I, I don't know how much of a score he's going to be, but the bonus is he doesn't really have to do that. He just has to get the ball to Wemby. I think this is going to be really fun. Yes. I'm I'm so excited. Dude, I don't care if Chris Paul is 90. Chris Paul, Wemby, and Yama pick and roll is going to be so fucking cool. <laughs> it's going to be so... You know, Chris Paul won games on Wemby's second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, like, birthdays. It just... I, that's, that was crazy. Uh, Najee Marshall... Signing with the Mavericks, three years, nah, $27 million, nine a season. Nine a season. Uh, reportedly, this happened after it was clear Derek Jones wouldn't be re-signed because he switched agents and made it weird, whatever, whatever. Fine signing. is. I feel like this is a bit of a chance that Najee Marshall can play the same role. I think he's probably a bit of a better defensive fit for as good as um, – Derek Jones was Derek Jones is small. So he'll get pushed around a little bit by the bigger guys. Najee Marshall's a little bit taller or at the very least the same height. And I think he weighs a little bit more. He's six, seven, two twenty. Derek Jones jr. At like, watch me look. And he's the same is listed at six, five to 10. So you get a little bit more size, a little bit better three point shooting. I like the fit. Um, what do you think? So to me, Derek Jones and Marshall had very similar seasons in. Sure perspective yes. of like what their career is where Najee Marshall shot 39% from the field on three attempts a game rest of his career probably don't want him shooting threes however if you're looking to replace Eric Jones Jr. with a cheap contract pretty good signing I think this is B I think it's a good addition I think it's gonna it's gonna help Dallas be a team that wants to compete and have a competitive roster around these guys and it I don't think he's gonna be a Luca has no help guy <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, Jalen Smith signs with the Bulls on a three-year, $27 million deal, same yeah. as Donji Marshall. Fine. Cool. Jalen Smith's a fun player. I, I think this helps him get a little bit younger. Jalen Smith's only 24 years old, 23 years old at this point. Um, 24 years old, averaged 10 and 5 on good efficiency for the Pacers last season. 
Um, get a little bit younger in the front court, get another guy to play with B thoughts. C maybe B. I think he's a B. I think it's, it's another move that falls into place with what Chicago is trying to do. You hated the giddy trade. I understood why you hated it, but I also had a reason for liking it. And that was just because, okay, like they're taking some direction. They're trying to actually take young players in, evaluate them, see what they can get out of them. Jalen Smith is someone in Indiana who was drafted pretty high by Phoenix, came over to Indiana and hasn't seen a ton of burn, but when he's gotten out there, he shoots pretty efficiently and plays decent ball. If you're Chicago, you're taking a swing at that, and you're like, okay, what is this guy going to do for us if we give him real minutes? Same with Giddy. Giddy's like, okay, we're going to give you the keys. What are you going to do with it? So they, they, this is a big window signing. It could end up being a D tier very well. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good chance, though, for Chicago. Like you said, Max Christie signing a four-year... Uh, $32 million deal with the Lakers. Kind of weird. I'd put it in the C tier. You can see the vision for him being a good player. And at the very least, you have a more expensive trade chip now. But like to throw $8 million, I guess you can just resign your own players so you can pay whatever. But just se- seemed a bit weird and a bit of an overpay for a guy like Matt Kirstie. But I, I mean, guess he's coming off what? His rookie yeah. season? So he was second no, round pick last year? I think two years. Uh, yeah, he's been in the league for two, two years now. Yeah. Um, okay. And he shot okay on very, very, very low volume. Didn't shoot that well in the G League, which might be a red flag. Just awkward. Seems like a bit of an overpay, but a bit weird. Yeah, he's probably not as good as Peyton Pritchard, but if you think you have something in him, paying him for this length isn't that bad of an idea, and $8 million is basically nothing now. So it, it is probably a C-tier signing. It doesn't really move anything. Yeah. But. Uh, Royce O'Neal. Signing a deal with the Suns, four years, forty-four, going back. B tier, get a good guy back. Eleven millions, good contract for him. Um, had to do it. How full that really? C tier is? Uh, no, I think I think eleven million for Racing is a really good deal, especially considering. No, I do too. Back I'm just teasing. Um, C tier is getting full. We can go to two rows though, so it, it, I mean, they, we can fit more guys. They had to do this because there yeah. is not a lot of room. I mean, not a lot of help around the, their big three. And it's one of the reasons why they struggled last year. Now, I know Royce O'Neal was part of the team that got swept by the Wolves and things didn't end quite the way that they had hoped. But bringing him back for some continuity, already played with Durant in Brooklyn, like there's a little bit of positivity going into this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just weird. Bull Bull going back to the Suns on a one-year minimum. See, fine. Like I I don't hate it. I'm over Bull Bull. You want to put a D? No, you can put him at C, but I'm over All right. it. I too, I am too. I think he's just whatever. Um, Pascal Siakam going back to the Pacers at a four year max. S tier. S tier. I was going to say A, but we can. If you're the S-tier. Pacers, you got to think of it like this: like how many Pascal Siakams do you have the opportunity to pay and have them actually play for you? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah, you have to. You gave up players and picks in the trade. Like, gotta keep them. Got to keep him. Had a good run to the conference finals. You have to build off that. That's yeah. one of your pillars. He had a good playoff run. Like, absolutely, you pay him. No brainer. I know he's on the older side now, but still. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, S is fine. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I just. I feel like that's on par with the. I don't know. Be signing for me, which we put a tier. Like that's the only. Like that's why I was thinking. Okay, put him down there. But I guess he's he's yeah. You Pacers, you're getting a. Big guy in a small market. It's fine. Nick Claxton, four years, 100 mil, 25 a season to stay in Brooklyn. See, like it's it's fine. That's a lot of money for Nick Claxton in my eyes. Like I think Nick Claxton's a fine player. I think you can trade it eventually. Um, but like, why, why, why resign him for that much? Why not trade him? Like, so I guess you trade, trade him, him now. <sighs> That's because they're they're <laughs> openly saying we're gonna fire sale our team. But true. Hey, Nick Claxton will pay you. I don't know what the market was for Nick Claxton. Maybe they paid him a little extra than he would have got out there. And then we'll just get assets back when you want to leave instead of letting you leave for nothing. So it's true. C tier is probably the nice place to start, but low key could end up being a B tier depending what the trade package they get for him looks like. But C tier is mm-hmm. very fair right now. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, Patrick Williams going back to the bulls uh, on a five year 90 million. This one. Five years, 90 mil, 18 a year. Fair. 18 mil for Patrick Williams is fine at his age and with the potential. 
he did get hurt last year and he's playing pretty well before he got hurt. Um, finally finding a groove a little bit, but he was only averaging 10, four and one and a half, but he was shooting 40% from three. He's only 23, excuse me, 22, going to be 23 by the time the next year starts. If you want to build around Josh Giddy, Kobe White, I had assumed Patrick Williams, Jalen Smith, like you, you can see it a little bit. I think overall it's a C, but considering how young he is and the fact that they have to like, like see how come like you have to, I'll put a B. I think it's fine. I, I, I think he was looking for it to start of last year, like a 25 mil. And so bring him down to 18. Like, I don't know. I, I think 18 million is a fine, fine contract for it's a lot of years at that rate too, which is good for Chicago paying a young guy that rate for that long. Sure. It could hurt you, but it feels like in more scenarios, it's going to help you and it's going to end up being a value contract. I think that's a fair assessment of it. It's just a question of whether or not he can actually stay healthy. Yeah. It's got to stay on the court. Uh, Malik Monk re-signing with the Kings. Um, this was way earlier, but a four-year, $77 million deal for him. That's S tier, bro. S- four years, $77 million is great value for the production you got from Malik Monk. I think he probably could have gotten more on the open market. He's getting paid under $20 million a year. He's a great player, great scoring punch. Like That's really, really good value for a Kings team that needs all the talent they can keep around. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think he's somebody that has played really well in Sacramento. It's a great signing from Malik Monk, too, so he can continue to be the best Malik Monk that he can be. Yeah. Still only 26. Um, still, still still only 26. 26. And he's going to be important for the Kings going forward if they hope to stay relevant and compete. Yes. The Devin Carter addition, it doesn't make me scratch my head with him. I know they got rid of Davion Mitchell. But I do wonder if there's going to be a little bit of a minutes – not battle, but a little bit of minutes like eating away to get Devin yeah. Carter out there and see what you can get from him. Yeah. Manuel quickly. Five years, 175, $35 million a season for Quick Dog. Uh, I made that up. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, <laughs> uh, you kind of have to because you're the Raptors. D tier. Yep. I think this sucks. Uh, dude. I and I love quickly. I think quickly is really good. I think quickly RJ Barrett, Scotty Barnes, Grady Dick. Like I think they genuinely are building a really, really good young team up there. That is way too much money for Emmanuel quickly. Like maybe he's, he, you know, progresses and I think he's an underrated defender. Like I, I can see the pathway for him becoming a Derek white type, but he's not right now. And it's just awkward. It, it's just, that's a lot of, lot of money for Emmanuel quickly. Who's still young. All this stuff has potential. That's uh, that seems like a crazy overpay for me. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> like I'd just... be happy with like 26, 20, like 25, you know, it's like 35 million a year is crazy. So we talked about this at the beginning of the tier list. And if you've stuck with us through the whole thing, respect the difference between overpaying somebody when you already have the team is different than overpaying someone as you're trying to build the team. Like this is not, yeah. To me, it's just not a building block for a great team. It's probably a building block for an okay team. Like maybe it's C tier because he's still young, and I do believe in his potential. But I, I, it's just so much money. I'm leaving it in D. That's a lot of money. Like you paid Scotty Barnes. Now you've paid him. That's a lot of your cap money. How are you going to get more players in there? Your team is not ready to be paying guys like this yet. It's just not. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, Kentavious Caldwell Pope. Uh, going to the Magic on a three-year, $66 million deal. <sighs> that's going to be a really, really, really damn good defensive team. I like this as A. I think this is a really good fucking signing for the Magic. That's man. where I land, too. I, I Jalen, just think- Suggs, Jalen Suggs, Contavious Cowell pope Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, and then Wendell Carter, whoever you want to throw at the five. Like, That's a fucking great defense moving forward, and he is a perfect veteran for that crew. That's uh, This rocks. Yeah, he's won a championship. He's joining a young team. He plays both sides of the ball. He's a top tier three and D guy for guards. Like, I don't know what player you really could have asked for if you're Orlando. Like, just joining your team. Like, these are the kind of guys that you can pay because you already have foundational pieces that have proven to you, hey, we're ready to compete. Like, Orlando fifth seed last year goes to seven games at Cleveland. Paolo's only going to get better. Franz is going to get better. They have so many young pieces around them. Now you're bringing in a guy that's been there, that's won a title, who's played with Jokic, who understands how to move without the ball. Like, great fit. Absolutely, you pay him. 
Definitely. Shout out KCP. Good deal. Jonas Valanciunas signing a three-year, $30 million deal with the Wizards. Very weird, but I, I do get it. <laughs> Fine. Uh, the explanation that I found for this, because I wrote about this because I cover the Wizards. Apparently, Alex, there were rumblings and rumors, I don't know how much of this is true, that Alex Starr would like to play some power forward. And so getting a big guy who can take on some of the, okay, I can, you know, body and be in a yoke a little bit. And you can use Alex Starr as the Robert Williams roaming free safety defense with 7-1, seven, 7-7 seven, seven wingspan. Like, you get it from that perspective. Get in a veteran. Get in somebody you can eat up some of those minutes. It's a bit awkward. I would land between C and B because, like, it, the fit just seems a bit weird with the rebuilding nice. Wizards and Williams. But you you like it for B? Yeah. I mean, if you're talking about bottom-feeding teams, this is a better signing than Tobias Harris to the Pistons. Yeah. Like, Valanciunas, a versatile big guy on offense. He has a good post presence. He can shoot the three a little bit. He's big. And like you mentioned, it opens up the floor for Alex Sar to kind of take on a different, unique defensive role and probably be the best version of himself. So Washington is not anywhere near being a good team yet, but they're kind of putting pieces in there where they can have quality players. Yes. They're building something fun. They're, they're, and that's they're a young tradable career. contract, by the way. Tyler Rucker was tweeting about it. It is. Tyler Rucker was tweeting about it. They're doing something right in Washington now. They're they're building something better. Uh, Clay Thompson, three years, $50 million deal with the Mavericks. Uh, update from Woj, no player option, just three years straight, 50 mil. Um, B, I think. I, I think, think that's a good B. signing for them. I do too. You want, you want A? You want an A? No, I'm not willing to go A yet. Okay. We'll have to see how it actually – on paper, it's a B signing. His his exit from Golden State was really year. weird. <sighs> I, that's I didn't cheap. realize – I think A. I think I'd be happy putting it in A. That's really good. I, I think he's a really like good player still. And, and for, I, I said this on the last pod when we were talking about him. Clay Thompson, like for all the shit that he got for his bad exit in Golden State, bro, this is a guy, 77 games played last year, 18 points, three rebounds, two assists, 43 from the field, 38.7 from three on nine three-point attempts a game. That's the exact player you want next to, uh, to uh, Kyrie and Luka. And not only that, why did they go out in the playoffs? The role players couldn't make threes. You know who's going to make threes? Motherfucking Clay Thompson. Like, like, I, I'm you sold me. 16 mil is a lot cheaper than I thought. A, I know he didn't do it in the play-in game. He shot over 10 in that second play-in game, but I'm not going to put all my stock into whether or not to sign him into one singular play-in game when we have an entire career history of him being a dominant three-point shooter. I'm not going to do that. I see you smirking. Not going to do it. I refuse. So the reason, the reason I'm smirking, well, uh, 2023 what? wasn't as bad as I thought. 36 37 percent from three in the playoffs. Yeah, I I remember him being like real bad in the Lakers series. I think that's yeah, just what stuck with me. 37 on 10 attempts a game. Like that's giving you three and a half threes a game. That's pretty damn good. That's better than what the Mavericks role players were giving him for 16 minutes. No, it Easy. E- even if like you're walking in with washed clay in like your mind. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's better than <laughs> be take your pick of Mavericks role guy. He's better than them. And yes. the $16 million a year is crazy. This just makes me scratch my head, though. Did Golden State just want, like, they're sick of him? They didn't want anything to do with him anymore? Like, if you're the know. Warriors, you wouldn't pay him $16 million a season? Yeah. I, from what I heard, I think Malika Andrews had it. Apologies if I'm wrong. But it was, like, last summer left, like, a bad taste in Clay's mouth. As in, in like... Respect. <clears throat> I think it was the context. Him? Yeah, I think it was the context of how much they were willing to offer, how much they were willing to pay, and so I think he was just kind of sick of it, or whatever. So maybe with that was it. And also for Golden State, letting him walk and letting uh, Chris Paul be waived opens up their MLE and saves them a little taxes. So I think it maybe it's a way for them to get cheaper a little bit. Um, and I guess they got DeAnthony Melton instead. Still would probably rather have Clay, but it's not like you lost him for like nothing. You still got to use Emily and grab D'Anthony Melton. And there's supposed to be a sign and trade, so we'll see what happens. Yes, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, okay, final tier list. I'll read it quick. S tier, Tyrese Maxey, Pascal Siakam. A tier, Paul George, OG Ananobi, James Harden. Um, or sorry, Kelly Paul George, Bray. Sixers. Uh, OG, back to the Knicks. Harden, back to the Clips. Ubre to the Sixers, Chris Paul to the Spurs, Malik Monk to the Kings still, KCP to the Magic, and Clay to the Mavs. B tier, Patrick Williams to the Bulls, Rosino you know, back to the Suns, Isaiah Hartenstein to the Thunder, Obi Toppin to the Pacers back, uh, Eric Gordon to the Sixers, DeLon Wright to the Bucks, Jonas Valanciunas to the Wizards, Zaya Joe back to the Thunder, Anthony Melton back uh, to the Warriors, Najee Marshall to the Mavs, Jalen Smith to the Bulls, C tier, Claxton Nets, Christie Lakers, Drummond Sixers, 
Um, Batum, Clippers, Derek Jones, Clippers, Bull Bull, Suns, Harris, Pistons. Love, Heat, Garza, Wolves, Suns, Plumlee, um, Isaiah, Joe, Thunder, Aaron Holiday, Rockets, Justin Manaya, Blazers, D tier, DeAndre Jordan, Nuggets, Alex Lund, uh, Len Kings, Drew Eubanks, Jazz, Quickly, Raptors. No F tier. I don't think there were any F tier, truly. Like, I don't think there were any, like, what the fuck are you doing signings uh, so far? Like, most of them were, like, either bad no, or not yet. average. Not yet. Yet is the keyword. Yet is, in fact, the keyword. All right. Good tier list. Let's go to the rest of the NBA section now. That took far longer than I thought, but it was fun. I had a good time. It was worth it. I agree. DeJounte Murray was traded <laughs> to the Pelicans. We haven't spoken since then because this was over the weekend uh, and we pre-recorded a day earlier this weekend. Um, DeJounte Murray joins the Pels in exchange for Larry Nance, Dyson Daniels, and two first-round picks. I think it's a fine fit for the Pelicans. I think it'll be a fun thing moving forward. Sorry if you hear my dog barking. Don't know what's happening. Um, and the Heat or the Hawks are rebuilding, so I guess it makes sense for them too. Uh, and Larry Nance's wife was less than pleased because he got traded during kids' bedtime and he was pulled away. She tweeted about it. It was very funny. <laughs> I didn't know that that happened. I'll uh, pull it up while you talk. Yeah. This is a really good trade for the Pelicans, I think. I think they are doing that thing where they think they're ready to go to the next level. Zion, when he's actually on the court, has been pretty good. He was a fat shit for half the season last year, and then the in-season tournament final or semifinal happened, and everybody cooked him. And then he got into shape, and he was playing really well. Like He played well in the playing game against the Lakers, and then he hurt himself. They have really good role players there. They have CJ, who's a veteran presence, who they did not give up. <clears throat> there are a lot of things with New Orleans to be excited about, and adding DeJounte Murray to the fold just makes it even better. So I don't know where they're going to end up ranking. I'm sure we'll do our... Standings predictions, which mean nothing, closer to the season starting. But they have to be in the mix for the playoffs instead of being in the play-in. It feels like they're in that playoff range. But there are a lot of solid to good teams in the West, so we'll have to discuss them. I can't find the tweet from Larry Nance's wife. Um, but it was effectively just like, getting traded during bedtime is dirty work. <laughs> what are you here to get to kill me, Griffin? David Griffin. Uh, it was very funny. Anyways. Um, yeah, I like Dejounte Murray. I like it a lot. I think the Pelicans will be in a good spot. Going to be weird to see what they do with Ingram. I think you mentioned that. Um, and the Hawks like Dyson Daniels, a good player, get a nice defender in there. Building with Zachary Rusache, I guess. Interesting to see what they're going to do with Trey Young. I don't really know. Um, we'll see what's going to happen moving forward, though. It's 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 a weird time, in Atlanta, because it feels like they're just kind of tearing it down, which is it's good. But I feel like you got to trade Trey Young to fully tear it down, right? Like you can't just keep him around. Like that's I don't know it's awkward. Well, you can because he's how old? <laughs> I I guess like Trey Young age, 25, 24, 25. Turns 26 25. by the time next season starts. Uh, okay, I guess. Like, uh, I don't know, man. It's it's a tough spot because I'm not a Trey Young guy. I'm not. I, I think you're going to really struggle with him being a cone. But at the same time, like. He is a good distributor of the ball. Old. He can score. He's not old. And I think giving up on him now after giving up Murray, like if you picked Murray over him, it's one thing. But mm -hmm. to give up on him now feels a little bit premature. I guess. But if I'm the Hawks, I'd rather just completely tear it down. Tank for Cooper flag and figure it out. I mean, That's where that I'm too. at. I'd rather do that than, than keep going here. Because, like, these next two drafts are going to be good, good, good drafts. You're going to get AJ DeBonta in there. You're going to get Cooper Flagg. Like, you want one of those guys. Uh, Sam, your Pistons signed J.B. Bickerstaff to Hell be yes. their head coach. I don't think J.B. Bickerstaff should have been ever fired from Cleveland in the first place. I think he's a pretty good coach. I, I think they were just hurt in the playoffs. I think he helped build a winning culture there again in Cleveland. Brought them back to the playoffs before. Uh, or to the play-in, at least, before injuries happened, before Donovan Mitchell even signed there. Pistons got a good one, man. I like Jimmy Big Stuff. And also, for what it's worth, of all the guys and coaches whose press conferences I've been to this season, best answers. Like, just one of the most well-spoken, like, nicest guys. Like, I like Jimmy Big Stuff a lot. I'm a fan of JB. I agree with you. Yep. I think JB got the fucking shaft in Cleveland. They were like... Hey, uh, your team finally won a playoff series, and then they were all injured in the second round and lost to one of the best teams ever. Fuck you, you're fired. <laughs> Probably a better fit than Monty. He is somebody that we saw deal with up and coming players with the Cavs. Like, 
He was there through the early stages of Mobley and Garland. And now going to Detroit, he'll have experience with the stage of their rebuild that the Pistons are at, which is essentially forever. But, you know, they're trying to get these young guys to be able to play together and play right and play winning basketball. And bringing bigger staff is a good step in that direction. A year ago, I would have told you the same thing about Monty Williams. So what I say really doesn't mean dick. But I do think he got a raw deal in Cleveland, and him landing with the Pistons is good for the Pistons. Definitely. Like I said, I like JB a lot. He's still younger. Like he's still on the younger side, too. So this could be a nice like building thing. How old is he? Do you want to guess? 47. 45. So he's still on the younger side. Um, not our not our guy, Joe, though. He's nowhere close. Joe, what is Joe? 37? 36? 36. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Happy birthday, happy, Joe. Happy Shout birthday out. from HBTC to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party, too. Hey. Next thing, DeMar DeRozan is going to be leaving the Bulls. Uh, well, he wants apparently. to. Yeah, His contract wants to. doesn't exactly allow for that, but. Well, he's free agent. Is he? Yes. <laughs> That's the whole thing. <laughs> His contract doesn't uh, allow for that, in fact. Sorry, uh, I just Joe, got an update. Joe Cowley, the, uh, Joe Cowley of the Chicago Sun-Times, sorry. Source told the Sun-Times late Sunday night that Alex Russo, Josh Giddy Giddy trade was the final straw in DeRozan's mind for any sort of return. As a 34-year-old will now use his free agency to shop elsewhere. You pasted it onto the sheet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I thought it meant trade request. I didn't no. I didn't catch the I glossed over the free agency thing. I knew all of the rest of this except for that. Yeah, the whole thing is like they didn't trade him and now they're gonna lose him for nothing. Like malpractice. Um yeah, like you mentioned here, one of the guys LeBron might take a pay cut for, et cetera, et cetera. I love um, this LeBron pay cut thing, by the way. Why? Because it took him 21 seasons to fucking figure out that the whole no help thing could be solved by fucking taking a pick. Okay. Outside of Stephen Curry, name one other max contract player who was taking Dirk. a pick up. Did he? Yes. Okay. Name another. It doesn't happen often. I'm it, telling exactly. you right now. Like, like, I don't think this should be used as, yeah, fuck this guy. Like, or well, is it is fuck, fuck this is, guy. Is, is it, it fuck Giannis too because of that? Is it fuck, you know, Jokic too because of that? Like, I, I don't like that. I don't, that doesn't, I don't like Well, that. no, because the fucking circle jerk crybaby shit around those guys isn't they have no help. LeBron went years and years and years where poor guy has no help. He has no help. He has no help. Take a fucking pay cut. But one max contract player taking like that doesn't like it's not he doesn't take up the whole max salary with his own thing like his own contract with a max contract. But what I'm saying is if it's no help no help no help fucking take a pay cut. That no because what I'm saying is if like him taking a pay cut would not significantly help because they still have room to make all these other moves. Like the point is not LeBron didn't take a pay cut so they couldn't sign guys. The point is they signed the wrong guys. The guys they signed sucked and they didn't put a good team around them. Like. Every single team in the league that has won a championship has a max contract player making max amount of money who didn't take a pay cut, but their teams put the best teams around them. I, I, I'm not that, even that, really I, saying this about like the current Lakers. It's more about I, like years and years and years ago. All you heard was, oh, Cavs don't have enough help. LeBron needs more help. And it was like, yes, oh, because cut. they that no, that that logic doesn't make sense, though. That How does your logic make doesn't make sense. Because him taking a pay cut. Like, it's not like because he didn't take a pay cut, they didn't have money and they didn't have the, the means to make better moves and add talent to the team. Like, the one max contract player doesn't take up the entire salary to the point where they can't bring in help. That's not how it works. Like, yeah, if but Jason those teams Tatum did have like players on those teams, but the thing was still more help, more help, more help. Yeah, because the had... players they put around him were bad. Kyrie like and that, Kevin that... Love were bad. More help, more help wasn't the Kyrie Kevin Love's years. Maybe it was the post Kyrie when it was. Just it, it was. It, you're right. It was the post Kyrie. So like but... him taking a pay cut would not have made the difference there because they just signed the wrong players and put shit team around him. Like I, 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 I get the complaining and the bitching and whatever. Like I, I'm not like I don't care for that. Like I think it's whatever. Like I'm not disagreeing with you in that. But I don't think LeBron taking a pay cut is the like solve solve of all the problems. Like that wasn't the problem. They still could have brought in more players. Like. If, if his, I mean, LeBron has like more endorsement money than God. Like he could play for the minimum this, and be fine. This, no, I think that's, I think that's stupid logic. I think that's dumb. The, like the, LeBron taking a pay cut. Like every team has a max player that you build around. The problem wasn't, oh my God, LeBron is so fucking selfish. Didn't take a pay cut. No, every team, Giannis didn't take a pay cut, and they put no, but it, players around. It's him an easy one. solution to the problem of people saying LeBron has no help. Putting all the onus on LeBron is dumb. 
Like, it's not I, all I, the I, onus, but it's it's an easy. The way, way to... you're phrasing it is all the onus, though. You're saying like all these people, like it's fucking LeBron's fault for not taking a pay cut. Like that's just not how. Well, you're work. absolutely correct. Like they did not put the right players around with the money that they had, but they could have had more money, and more money could have intrigued better players no, to come play. That's that's dumb. No one takes pay cuts. Like very, so few players take. I, pay cuts, I gave you two pay cuts right off the top of my head. I know. I'm sorry, and then I changed it to so few players take pay cuts, and also. Steph didn't take a pay cut. They paid him a small salary because his ankle was bad, and then it just ended up being good because he boomed. Like it's not like he didn't take a pay cut. They just were able to pay him less. Money LeBron or not, they more people know. should take pay cuts. Sure, they they should. <laughs> In today's league, it doesn't matter as much with the fucking um, CBA and how no one actually hits free agency. Like, I mean, you can detest to it. Like six p.m. yesterday was not what it would have been ten years ago. Yeah. It, it it happens. Um. Anyways, uh. Also, Dirk taking a pay cut was past like the Mavs' years of true contention. What year was it? Oh, okay. No, I see pay cuts across his career. Yeah, Dirk is a fine example. Steph was. I mean, you can play at Brady. Because... It's a different sport, but he was like notorious for taking pay yeah, cuts. Yeah, that's yeah. I I think that's a whatever. I think blaming LeBron for that is like you could blame so many players for that. No, you can't. You can actively I, blame I think, so many people. Yeah, You're that, absolutely but that's right. just not how it works. Like I'm not like taking a pay cut. I, I don't. I, I don't, I don't like the that. reason why it's it's like angled towards him is because I truly cannot tell you off the top of my head anybody that has had more has no help narratives around them. He had bad teams around him in Cleveland for years. Like I, I don't think it's it's it's. I don't think it's an opinion like thing. Like objectively, he had shit teams around him. And I'm not saying like, oh yeah, fuck LeBron, like whatever, whatever. Like he just objectively had really bad teams around him in Cleveland until he left for Miami. And then he had like two years of bad teams around him in Cleveland after post carry, maybe one year. That, that's like, like the 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 span I'm focusing on. That that first stint, nothing to do with him. Nothing he could have. And also he wasn't like superstar like making as much global endorsement money as he is like in that second stint like first stint like still rookie rookie contract extension lebron like you do it you get your money like that's the stage where you get your money but then if it's like oh no help no help no help no help yes the team has the responsibility to make better decisions like a reason why that 2018 team had no help was because the Kyrie deal didn't really work out the way they'd hoped. Isaiah was hurt, etc. But at the same time, if he was making half the money, they still could have more cap flexibility. Both things can be true. He was making half the money, bro. It, it, he was already on a contract. It's not like he re- like he he was under. When contract, he went so. back to Cleveland, he could have like signed for not that much or not half the money. He could have. Yeah, he was what 27, 28 at that point in the prime of his career. You're not gonna like no, no, I, that lot. He could have taken a pay cut to sign with the Lakers then. I mean, but no one like that's not. But my point is like you're blaming LeBron for this thing. That's just not like people don't do that. Like two, like one person. You gave me one example. Like that's just they, not a normal. More thing. people should do this. I'm telling you right now, they should do sure, it. And, sure, and it's Fine. it's not limited to him. And I'm gonna tell you. Not gonna fucking happen. It's just not a thing that's gonna happen because people get it. You got to get their money. You got to set your family up. You got to make as much money as you can because, like, it, it is just the best way to lead a good life for you and future generations. It's like, true. It, that's it. But then there's also like a how much do they really need. I'm say, I'm not even saying just for LeBron, hit, how much LeBron somebody needs. like I'm saying at LeBron's how much is, level where how they much have all does, the endorsements. How much does LeBron want for Bronny, and how much does Bronny LeBron want for Bronny and Bronny's kids and Bronny's family and in LeBron's parents? Like he is setting his family up for generational wealth and you're not you're that's just you just don't pass up on that you just don't period it's point blank done easy done. he's at a point where he would have that same thing like generational wealth regardless if he was even playing in the nba don't pass up the money you don't pass up on you, you don't pass up on million like hundred million dollars you just don't do it you just can't do it like it's Brady point blank, did it. period, done. good for him for, good, good, claps Proud that's why the patriots have as many titles as they did because he did that Okay, but I'm not going to blame LeBron for passing for not passing up on hundred million dollars. I think that's dumb. It, it, like, well, I it clearly is because I, nobody I, does it. I will commend Brady and Dirk for passing up on the money. I'll commend them, but I'm not going to blame LeBron okay, for fair. not doing it. That's I think that's unfair. Uh, next NBA thing, anyways, DeRozan leaving the Bulls. Good for him. Like, I don't know how that spawned out of that. Um, because DeRozan's one of the guys LeBron <laughs> would take a pay cut for. Clay was also on the is, list. 
which is dumb because I think DeRozan would be a bad fit on the Lakers, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Jazz are reportedly going to trade Laurie Markkinen. People are expecting it now. If he ends up in OKC, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, well, because there there's a world he, that could happen. Here's what I'll say about that. I yeah. don't disagree, but if he does end up in OKC. I do think there is a little bit of Kristaps in that where he's been on so many poor teams. Like, it's just like, oh, wait, I'm on a really good team. There's going to be a sacrifice. But I don't know if that's going to be the case for everybody that's there. Like, there may end up being a little bit of 2019 Celtics to it. Oh, no. Because way. No, all of these so guys are so young. I don't think so. Because I think the only guys that might feel that are going to be the guys who are going to be the top three options on the team. Shea, J Dub, Laurie. I guess Chet, too, but I don't see that. Like, I I don't see that at all. Like you, you think of the way the Celtics. I'd say twenty five percent chance. I don't really see it either. I don't think so. Because like the starting lineup would be what? Like let's assume it was Lou Dort and picks for Laurie Markkinen. It would be Shea, J Dub, Laurie Markkinen, um, Chet, Isaiah Hartenstein with Caruso off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. Or unless you wanted to put Chet at the yeah. center, bring iHeart off the bench, and start sure. Alex Russo. That's fine too. You can mix and match and figure it out from there. And then you still have Isaiah Joe, Andrew Wiggins. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Like, case I don't walls. even know if it's so much about the bench stuff, though. It's like about the shots and like the, stri- like the things that made the Celtics great this season, like the willingness to sacrifice and stuff. I don't doubt that some of that will be with these OKC guys. Like, they seem like a good young group. Like they seem like they have really good chemistry. They all get along, but at the same time, like when the outside guys come in and it's like some of the shots have to go to them, does it completely go as smoothly? But I don't I think, think yes, but there is a chance. No, I think the only guy that would it be that it would be like that with maybe even maybe, and I don't think it would happen is Laurie. And I think that would just be a case of, he would just get his touches as well instead of the giddy and, and door Cause like Caruso and iHeart don't need offensive touches. That's Correct. not why you pay those guys. They're so low it usage. would just be, it would just be giving Dorts and giddy shots in a different way to Laurie Markin. And like Laurie Markin would probably still get 15 shots, 16, 17 shots a game. And and Shea would get his twenty five, and J Dub would get his you know eighteen, and Chet would still get his like thirteen. Then I think they'd be chilling. I'm sure it helps watching <clears throat> Celtics have just won a championship yes. by sacrificing. So it'll be very easy to point right at them, and be like, "Look, this is what you need to do." Yeah. Outside of that, who else could trade for Laurie Markkinen? I'm trying to think now. Let's see. Um, oh, let's see. Man. Let me look through. Uh, probably not worth it for the Spurs yet. Feels like there are better things they could get down the line when they think they're ready. Milwaukee uh, for what? Brooke and picks and young players. And then you run with the Giannis at center thing. You like that, huh? You keep bringing it up. Well, I I, I like it because that's what they reportedly want to do. Like they want to play a more versatile style yeah. defense, which would just be Giannis at center. <clears throat> Still um, Brook Lopez is a good player. Brook Lopez is a fine player, but if you could trade Brook Lopez for Laurie Mark and you do it, <laughs> like I would do it. <clears throat> um, improve the offense a bit more, run there, play more versatile defense. Um, Julius Randle for Laurie Markin. Do you do it? <laughs> what is the benefit of that for you if you're the Jazz? Picks. What picks? Whatever, whatever picks they have left. I don't know. I don't know. This isn't updated in the picks that they gave up from Mikael Bridges yet, so I can't see. They gave up a lot of picks. I know they did, but they had a lot of picks. I think um, the picks they, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't remember which ones they had. I think they can still trade like 2030, 2031. Let me see. Let me look. Uh, they so they many. gave up in the trade, they gave up 25, 27, 29, 31. And a swap in 28 and a 25 via the Bucks. That means they will have next year's Detroit pick protected one through 13, which could still be whatever down the line. I don't I don't know what the protections in that are going to be. They have next year's Washington pick protected one through 10. I think both of those could turn into seconds, but they're still they have they really know. good protected picks. Exactly. But they're protected picks. And I think they are the type of. Um, protected picks that turn into seconds if they don't convey eventually. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't uh, think they're okay, as so it good. doesn't like eventually convey <laughs> that might yeah. So like example that Pistons pick that they own um would be would turn into if it doesn't convey a oh wait sorry no the 2025 Pistons pick 
um, would turn into uh, first round top 16. Uh, it would be top 13 protected in 25, 11 protected in 26, top nine protected in 27, or else it's a 27 second round pick. So if the Pistons are a just missed the playoffs team or in the play in by 25 or 26, 27, that'll be a mid first round pick, which still isn't bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's still like not a bad pick to have. Like, it's kind of crazy. The Pistons traded that pick. They did that in the Christian Wood trade um, years ago. Um, and the Wizards one, which was traded in the Russell Westbrook trade, is top 10 in 2025, top eight in 2026, or else it turns into two seconds, which still two 2026 seconds. 2026 one might pay off. 2026 um well even like if it's not like a 2026 second 2027 second those would still be like good second round picks um which again not a bad first so two conditional first that aren't bad that they could trade for Laurie marketing is still what we're talking about here uh, and then past that like you mentioned they probably can't trade anything but they could trade like they could probably trade a 26 swap they could trade a 28 swap like trade swap still and so you could yep. still got stuff for Laurie marketing if you're the next um to my and door. also miles mcbride if you really want to like dish stuff out. Oh, sure um who else so who else get lori um calves bring him back <laughs> run it back with he was awful at the end of his thing with the calves i'll never forget watching that playing game rooting for brooklyn real hard because i i mean yeah rooting for brooklyn and he was brutal in that game um i don't think philly could anymore orlando pacers if you're indie do you do it I feel like you'd have to give up quite a bit, though. Like a lot of your rotation guys. I wonder like you how do, long... If you're going to do it, you have to do it now so you can still have free agency. To... I wonder how long they have to wait to trade Toppin, not that they extended him. 60 days, 30 days? So like if you trade Toppin and like whatever first you can give up still. Not bad. Um, then you can roll out Lori at the three. Um, do the Raptors go all in on mediocrity? The Heat. He could Unfortunately. get sunburned. Well, I mean, you could trade Terry Rozier and picks, whatever you have left. That wouldn't be bad. Western Conference. Could the Warriors go after him? They could. I think that's my favorite. Holy fuck, is it raining? (laughs) Um, That's not bad, yeah. Past that. I'm I'm just looking through here. Let's see. Uh, If you're the Pistons, do you... Go after it. Uh, if you're the Hornets, you say, "Hey, we want to make a little bit." Hornets of a jump. might almost be there. He feels a little redundant with Brandon Miller, though. Like I feel like you want no, to. I don't think re- so at all. Well, I just think you want to have Brandon Miller have as much opportunity to grow yet before you start making any trades. Like you want him to I establish think... himself before you start throwing in other players. Sure, but I think you're undervaluing Lori's ability as a primary off ball catch and shoot guy who can also handle the ball like right now in utah he is very i have the ball a lot i'm making plays but like he's an elite three-point shooter who can also push up i think he's gonna get a lot if he's on a really good team i think he's gonna get most of his time off the ball and i'm not saying the hornets are there yet but if you're the hornets you can still prioritize giving the ball to, to Lamelo ball and brandon miller and then just having laurie play a primary off ball role while he can also handle it and do some stuff well that's where like i worry with this right because i agree with you i think he would really be a great fit on a really good team <laughs> even though I was like, oh, like I'm worried about OKC. But with a team like Charlotte, he may get there too soon where they're like, ah, but like he's an all-star level guy. Like we have to get him involved in our offense. And like Brandon Miller might suffer from that where he should be getting more freedom and his green light may diminish a bit. And there may be weird like growing pains with that. Mm. I don't know if you want to risk that yet. Like they're rumored to be bringing in Josh Green. Like I think they're doing the right things right now where they're kind of bringing in guys that are all on the younger side. Like the grant edition was pretty good for them after the deadline. When LaMelo's healthy, he'll play well with Brandon Miller as his second guy. And then the rest of these guys can kind of fill in. I think once they're ready, adding a marketing type will be good, but I don't know if it's the right thing yet. Probably. You don't want to stunt growth. All right, hear me out. I'm going to be wild for a second. How much better or worse do you get if you trade Michael Porter Jr. for Laurie Markkinen and Jordan Clarkson? I think if you're Denver, it's not the worst thing in the world because they really don't like the MPJ contract, the fan base. They think it's a bad contract. They think the the production you get from him really isn't worth it. I think you're essentially replacing him with glory, and then you get an the extra only problem scoring punch is, off the bench with Clarkson, but he doesn't play defense. The only problem is 
you'd have to extend Laurie after this year. And they have not shown a willingness to do that yet. <laughs> uh, so that's scary. Um, Thunder, we talked about. Clippers? Clippers? Could the Clippers? I don't know what picks they have to give up. But... I, I wouldn't. They don't. I don't think they have a lot of picks. I wouldn't be shocked if the Clippers were in on it just because I feel like they're really desperate to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know what the trade would look like. I don't yeah, know what they don't really have much to trade. Ah, right. I don't. I don't know like what Utah would get back that's worth it that the Clippers would be willing to give up, where it would still make sense for them to make this trade. Yeah, because you can't cut the supporting cast too much, or it doesn't make sense. Well, you could Phoenix. do like you could do like Norman Powell and, and whatever picks and seconds you have, but I just don't think they have enough to entice it. Like there is one to one because Lori only makes eighteen mil, so it's not like he makes an obscene amount of money that you have to combine for it. Um, mm, if you're Dallas, you're really wishing you held on to Tim Hardaway Jr. a little longer here. Uh, <laughs> would you? I don't think they would trade PJ Washington right away, but you could do that, and that would be funny. Um, somebody put that. out that um, you know, the meme of like the "Hey guys, like I'm really trying to help." Mm -hmm. It's Luca. Guys, we're down 15. Please lock in and help. It's Kyrie saying hella with like all the emojis and then it's hey, Clay yeah. just showing off his four rings. <laughs> I got a good one for you. Kings. Yeah, it makes sense. Like they Harrison do have Barnes and all the picks. Yeah, that would be an upgrade. And it makes sense because like the De'Aaron Fox future seems a little cloudy right now. It feels like they have to take a step in the right direction if he's going to stay. <clears throat> there could be some desperation there. I have a better one for you. Spurs. I Didn't I say Spurs? Maybe, but I didn't hear you. <laughs> Kelton Johnson is... picks. Gets you there. E what, like Easy. Done. <laughs> I, I don't disagree, but it's just like another one of those. Do you want to wait and see what your young guys do and then take a swing later down the line when everyone's more ready to play? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like but, I just got Jameson where like I told you an idea. You told me oh, it sucks. And then we came back. What about this? I didn't. I, didn't, I don't think you said it sucks, but you don't remember it. No, I didn't. Maybe I didn't um, say it. comments. Say yeah, if I said it. Or yeah. Not, let me know if I'm I, getting I gaslit. definitely thought it. Did I get any gaslit? No, think about that though. Like you next year, it's obviously short short term because Chris Paul is like a short term solution. But like you could roll out Chris Paul, Stefan Castle, Devin Bissell, Lori Markin, and Victor Wembanyama. That might be a playing team in the Western Conference. Like that's fucking really really good. Like and Lori Markin is like only twenty seven. It's not like he's like ninety. Like he's still up there. Uh, he's still he's still there. Um, Rockets. Do they swing? The Rockets are starting it, but... to become a trade team because it feels like they have too many guys. Ooh. At the does same level. Mem does Memphis swing? Bro, I can not... see it. I'm, not, I'm laughing and... because I think we're just going to go, oh, does every, Look, like every single that's team. That's the thing because he makes, go to every team. He, mo he makes little enough money where it could make sense for plenty of teams. You know what I'm saying? How much does he make? 18 million? 18, yeah. Celtics. Can't literally cannot do it like like it, because of the second apron you can't aggregate can't players and trades. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know Jake Eisenberg earlier in the season said he would trade Drew Holiday in a deal for Laurie Marketing or at some point did that. And I, I wouldn't. Was insane. I wouldn't either. Um, last one, weirdest one, Portland. I don't think they're ready yet. They don't have a direction I don't think yet. so either, but they have shown that they are willing to buy, which is odd, but. Well, they bought an <laughs> Abdia who's like still kind of a project. Like Lori feels like well... he's like three years removed from that. Yeah. I suppose. How old is He's only 22, but I'm just saying like he had a phenomenal end of the season last year. And last year he averaged 15, seven and four on 50, 37 splits. Like he is. Damn good player. No, they, right now. they bought it a good time, but like marketing is how old? 23, 27. Right. So, like, the gap, like, I know. Yeah, yeah. Danny is more on par with what they're trying to do. Like, if if that happened and he went to Portland, it would be a very Chicago Bulls move. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
Ratless time. We're almost Jesus Christ, two hours in. Okay. Ratless. This is what we call a podcast. This is insane. Okay. Uh, I don't think we wasted any of our minutes, though. Maybe LeBron stuff, but besides LeBron might have been a waste of time, but that's okay. Jesus Christ. All right. What do you got? Uh, We spent almost an Almost an hour on the free agency recap, by the way. Well, 51 free agency minutes. is important. It's like an event. No, it, it was crazy, though. And there's still more to go. Like, there's still some pieces that need to. Yeah, play. no. Free agency is like a good use of our time. We're going to jump off this podcast and the Celtics are going to sign someone. That's okay. Free video. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Rat List. Rat List, my, my basketball friend just today. You know, they, they were like, hey, you guys want to run at 10 30? One person showed up. That's fucked. Got to play good one on one. Got good work because I haven't been playing a lot of basketball lately. I'm probably not going to play today because it's pouring out. I just don't feel like going out in that. So I'll probably just settle for Xbox. But I would like to go. Probably won't. Uh, but yeah, everybody was like, oh yeah, you guys down? Everybody was down. Then it rolls around. Nobody wants to play ball. Nobody's down. Fucking losers. That's Rat tough. Uh, I'll route list myself. So mm. on Saturday, my friends and I did a case race, which is you. You did a case race. Yes, I <laughs> poorly did not carry my weight. Um, is this why you didn't want to tell me what you were doing? Well, you didn't like not no. want to tell me what you were doing on Saturday, but you didn't like mention what you guys were all doing. Oh no! Uh, yeah, no, we did case race. We bought a thirty pack. Okay. There were six. There were five of us, so our, we all had to drink six to, to keep the pace because we wanted to do sub thirty. Okay. Spoiler: thirty seven fifty nine. Not ideal. Um, I only did five. Did not carry my weight. Poor, poor showing from me. But I'm, I'm getting through there. Also, failure was we went out the night before too. So like mm-hmm. my stomach was just already full and it just never cleared. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did it at like two in the afternoon. So this was less than like we got home at three. So this was like less than 12 hours after I was just drinking. Just woke up, dude, you're having this for breakfast. Yeah, I know. And so I'm drinking, I'm drinking, whatever. I, I, I'm i finishing my fourth one and there's a little bit left at the bottom and I just take it all in one go. But I got all foam and I look at daddy. I'm like, not staying down. Just bang. It's just all that <laughs> goes in the toilet. And it is all foam. I <laughs> All foam. Um throw up disaster i did drink one more after that so i i rallied i got back in there for the team you got to do it uh but yeah poor showing need to be better in the future going out the night before was not the way to maximize our time in that 37 59 not ideal definitely not ideal i don't know if i've done this with you before power mm. rate not number one thing like to throw up that's like a, a good experience no mm. shake yeah if you if you throw up a milkshake it's just like you're having the milkshake and like it's still yeah, not bad not bad not bad worst beer, thing never drank beer so i can't really tell you like well it was mostly foam mostly foam worst throw up experience i had was a few months ago a couple months ago maybe uh i was drinking rum and cokes all night and they came up i I don't know how to phrase this. I've never like made myself throw up because I just I, I can't do it, whatever. But like right. when this is so gross. If you made, I mean, you you're two hours hear in. this. Thunder? The rain? No, no. <clears throat> if you're two hours in, you're here because you love us. So I'm gonna tell you the story, anyways. Um, it's true. That's true. <clears throat> right. Uh, I like, like when I do it, it's like forceful is like a hilarious word to use, but like I, it's I've got to like really work to get it to whatever. Mm. I threw up so hard after this rum and coke I was drinking, which was not only gross, I couldn't like see out of one eye for like two minutes, oh, three minutes. No. Like, like, and 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 you laugh, but like I was like sitting there at five a.m. like five in the morning. I was like, <laughs> "What is hell?" Like I'm testing. I'm sitting here like this, like opening one eye, closing the other, couldn't see. and it's I couldn't crazy. see out of my left eye. I, I like I genuinely could not see, and I was like to the point where I was terrified. I was like, "Am I just blind now? Like what is happening?" It came back eventually, but I also have a problem with my left eye i don't think it perceives light like the same way i don't know how to explain it like i'll wake up in the middle of the night and i'll look to like just look around my room and i'll look through my right eye and i can like see shapes and stuff and i'll look through my left eye and i just can't see anything like i there's like something about this eye that like perceives light differently and can't work but yeah rattless myself for for throwing up in the middle of the case i don't have a light thing with my left eye but like it's definitely weak like if i go like yes. this and i cover it it's much more blurry it's hard. Like, I can't read as fine and everything. Oh, I should probably wear glasses. Probably should. Um, but, yeah. 
you ever I have more stuff, but to stay on the vomit. I had when we worked at Heavy, my interview to work at Heavy, and it was on the computer. I had played basketball that day and I felt like well, heavy, and I felt weird. And then I get home mm-hmm. and I start to feel nauseous and I'm on this call. Call goes like an hour. I get off that call. Yeah. I go in the bathroom and I fire like a fucking fire hose into the <laughs> toilet. It was crazy. I vomited so bad. I can't believe I made it the whole interview. It was one of the worst experiences I've ever Respect. had. Respect. Made it Rat through. list. Um, people at the drive-in that, one, have their lights on. Two, have the like the backs of their 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 trunk their trunk like up in yeah. the air to where it's slightly <laughs> blocking the screen. Yeah. So I went to the drive in on Friday. Fun time. Love going to the drive in Sisals. Inside Out 2. Inside Out 2, by the way, have I've not seen really the first good. one. I enjoyed the movie. I don't know what the cast is. Whoever plays Anger, Bill Burr would be the perfect person to play Anger. I've heard Inside Out 2 is fucking, like, really, really good. It's a good movie. No, no, I thought it was good. Like, good on all facets. Like, not even that it's a kid, like, for a kid's movie. Like, no, I thought it was good. That was a good movie. <clears throat> Let me see. Who plays Who's plays Anger? Let me find it. Um, Curious. <clears throat> Anger is Louis Black. Okay. I'm telling you right now. Bill Burr. Bill Burr would be the best. Oh, I didn't know. Phyllis? From the office is in it. She's sadness, right? Oh my! I knew God, I recognized yeah. that. Yeah, <clears throat> I didn't. Amy Poehler's joy. It's yeah. always weird to me to see voice actors because I just don't know. Oh, Iota Beery from The Bear is Envy. That I didn't know. Sydney from The Bear. I haven't seen The Bear. <clears throat> oh, I thought you had. Anyway, sorry. Continue. It. Sorry, my bad. Continue. Um, but yeah, so I I was. I drove the ladies' car because my car, the radio buzzes, as you've experienced. So you have to listen to the movie on the radio. So we took this. We, for whatever reason, even when you put the lights off, they don't turn off. So I had to turn, like, the car half off to where the radio goes for it to happen. But I was very self-conscious the whole time because I was afraid that I was disturbing people. Uh, but it was a fun experience. I, I enjoy the drive-in. But yeah, I don't have anything else to add on that. Nothing to really complain about too much. It was a fun activity. Fair rat list. Uh, I will rat list my calf. Um, so I slept on the... <clears throat> I'll explain. I so And my friend Ryan can attest. I went out drinking on Friday night. Very fun. We had like... They call it family dinner. It was me, my new roommates, my best friend Danny. You know Danny. Yeah. Um, and then some of their friends who I assume I will become friends with, but I don't know that well because I haven't met them a bunch. Um, but we went out, had dinner at an Italian place. They got chicken parm. It's very good. Very good. Love me a chicken I love parm. chicken parm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And then we went out to... Oh, I told you I'd have stories from this weekend. Um, Look at you. We'll get, <clears throat> we'll get to the calf. I went Going out outside. to a bar called Scholars in Boston, and we ran into my friend Danny's friends who he works with. One of them's name, his nickname is Q-Tip because his last name starts with Q. It happens, right? Q-Tip. Q-Tip, huge Celtics guy. And when I go out anywhere, I'm sure you can, you can understand this. Huge Celtics guy. This isn't a rat list. This is great. Love Q-Tip. Okay. Awesome guy. Comes up to me. All he just goes, he goes, 18. Shakes my hand. Just 18. Just that, that, that's the extent. Oh. Every time he came up to yes. me the whole night, he just goes, hey, hey. 18 shakes my head like that that was the whole thing which is great it was awesome shout out q-tip he's a beast um then after we're there for a little while it's fun time good time hanging out went to karaoke bar good i didn't sing anything i went up on stage when all the guys went up we sang i want it that way fun time Mm. vibes for the fellas good time um there was just one guy who was being very weird to the girls in our group that we were out with just 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 like not even weird like the way he was like doing stuff just like couldn't couldn't take a hint type of weird you know what i'm saying like couldn't didn't get the yeah hints. just just An optimistic like, weird like yeah like they went on stage to sing and he like <laughs> laid on the stage with them and it was just like what well, brother oh, like can man. we can we learn can we learn just, come on um whatever get home hanging out made some like they're not mac and cheese balls they're like risotto cheese balls like italian cheese balls very good had those very good go to sleep sleeping on the couch whatever it was like 3 a.m 5 30 rolls around i wake up calf cramp hurts wakes me up it's the I'm like, worst i'm like ouch ouch need to stretch this out start stretching it out 
only makes it worse. Like, and really? when I tell you this was the worst pain I've experienced in the last three years, like, I, I like my my buddy Ryan was also sleeping on the couch. Which, first of all, his house, but his friends from home, they took his bed. Like, the two that ain't like, happening. <laughs> <laughs> that, that so i'm not gonna go quick but like i've heard people do this before was I, not by i his will choice. never do this it was not his choice so he he was in his bed like about to sleep and his two friends from home uh these two girls they came up and they like just like we're hanging out like they got in the bed with him and he's like all right whatever like th- these are like lifelong friends like they, they're like okay. like better friends forever so like added context and then they, like, he was just like, all right, there is no room. I'm going to sleep downstairs. So whatever. He was on the couch is the point. But the next morning he goes, Jack, are you okay? I heard you at 5 a.m. like writhing in pain. I'm like, <laughs> my calf hurt for the next 24 hours. Like that I was shit's no joke. You fuck day. up the calf cramp, dude, you're going to be screwed. Dude, I, I, I couldn't like get it. Like it was like 45 seconds of what I'm dying. Like I don't know what's happening. And I couldn't stop it. And it was the most insane pain I've ever felt in my life for no fucking reason at all. I don't get it. I I most commonly experience like calf cramps because like I'll I'll do essentially I'll work my legs too much. Like I'll go for a run and then I'll go play basketball on the same day. Yeah, I don't know. So like after like three or four games of basketball, I'll take a jumper and I feel that. But it, it doesn't stay. But it's like letting me know like it's time to stop. So I'll stop. Oh, yeah. This came out of nowhere. I was just sleeping on the couch. Oh, I'll get it in bed me. once in a while, too. Like if I'm <laughs> yeah. just laying there. And then I'll wake up and I'll feel it, but I haven't had it, it just stick. Didn't go away. That it is all. Sixty full seconds. I'm like, ow, ow, ow! Help, help, help! Please, like, I didn't know what to do. And I was also trying not to be loud and wake people up because I'm just sleeping on the couch. And so, like, I was just like, mm, like trying so hard. Um, but that was cooked. We also played ball the next day because that was Friday night on the I couch. Yeah, it was fine. I, I once I was like, once I was moving around, it was like, all right, like I didn't okay. notice as much because I was just going. Um, I played like shit. I couldn't make my layups. Like I was just smoking. Like there, I was just banking off the rim. Like I, I wasn't. I won both games. Like it was fine because, whatever. But I, it, I didn't play very well. But it was uh, it's a good day. It's a fun time. <clears throat> Rat list. Rat list day. So you don't necessarily deal with this because your job is. You're your own boss, essentially, right? Like sure. you start work when you want to, you finish work when you want to. You don't have to wake up when you don't want to. A holiday does not mean anything to you, right? Like it's sure. not like a day off per se. It's just like another day. There might be extra plans. For me, when there's a, a holiday like the 4th of July, I don't really want to get up and do stuff. Sure. Rat list. Fourth of July plans. Mm. The lady has requested that I go with her and some of her family to Martha's Vineyard, which is fine. I've never been. I'm looking forward to seeing the space that I have not seen. However, I'm not looking forward to having to take a 630 in the morning ferry on my day off. That defeats the purpose of a day off. Half the purpose of the day off is so I don't have to wake up early. So Why would I want to get up to go get a ferry and do this? I I want to stay mm-hmm. home. This is I yeah. I spent my whole life avoiding family activity, family parties. It would be like heroin, like getting out of stuff, like picking up a work shift so I didn't have to go to a family party, stuff like that. Turns out, when you grow up, all you do is family parties. Those are those type of activities. It's all you do. Growing I up, have, it, yeah. It's awful. It's awful. You got to get up early. You gotta be kidding me! Get up early on my day off. It's tough. Uh, Rat list gambling. Uh, I just saw, found a tweet. Chris Mannix tweeted this out and makes a good point that I didn't think of. Do you see this? I I did see the tweet, but I'll let you present it. Keep an eye on a casino slash resort magnate pursuing Celtics ownership. Grossbeck doesn't own TD Garden. Now one of the hold older in the NBA, uh, older arenas, I should say. A new majority owner may want to build a new arena. When it comes to gambling, Massachusetts is open for business. If they rename TD Garden or build a new one called like FanDuel Arena, I'm gonna kill myself. Like, They're not gonna be able to. Where are they gonna put an arena? <clears throat> don't know. Why would they rebuild TD Garden? I don't know. I'm just not rebuild, but like you know how the Warriors built their own arena so they can profit and make money off of renting it out and stuff. 
Oh, yes, because the Bruins own that. Okay, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I don't think they would do it. They, I don't I, think there's space for them to do it. Where are they going to do it? I don't know. Somewhere. That would be fucking stupid. Yes, I agree. Wouldn't like it. <clears throat> Would not like it one bit. Um, I don't know about anything else. I had a good weekend. It was a fun time. I'm going golfing. I'm going golfing a lot this week. I'm golfing tomorrow morning. I'm golfing Friday morning. I'm golfing Sunday. Very excited. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be very fun. Um, um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. If I, I'm trying to think of what else I did this week. Oh, uh, <clears throat> not necessarily Ratless, but fun story. So Saturday after case race, good thing about case race, get you drunk real quick. Was feeling it. Was, was having a good time, right? 37 okay. minutes, five beers. You're good. We're playing FIFA, me and the fellas. 2v2, right? As you do. Because the Euros were on. We played Euros, FIFA. We played like <clears throat> countries. Uh, me and Ryan, one of my future roommates, shout out Ryan Beast. We're playing against Danny, who you know, and Brian, another one of my future roommates. Also shout out Brian. Uh, names you will hear on the podcast, getting you familiar. Ryan, Brian, Mike, my future roommates, Ethan. Also lives with them now. I'm living with Ethan. Ethan moving in with the girlfriend. Names, right? Context. Me and Ryan playing Danny and Brian. We win the first game. 3-2, whatever, I think. Something like that. And the two goals they had scored were penalties because handballs in the box, like stupid shit. Like we, we That happens in FIFA? Exactly. Uncontrollable stuff for us. Like could not do anything about it. Just hit the hand. There were an obscene amount of penalties in this session of games we played just because like the ball would like get crossed but then one of somebody's defender was in the way so it hit the hand like crazy stuff that was out of you gotta turn that off (laughs) exactly wild right so we win the first game they're mad they go rematch we go all right second game we win again right win again easy right they're still mad third game happens we win again we'll start to come off brian you're not making the right passes danny what the fuck was that and ryan and i sitting there laughing our ass off right crying laughing we see what's happening they say best of seven series. We go, okay, play a fourth game. We go down 4 0. Right? We're down 4 0. First half. For, like within within the first like 30 minutes of the game, down 4 0. <clears throat> I turned around and go, hey, Celtics lost game four. So, Celtics got blown out game four. It happens, right? Hmm. We get a penalty, score a goal, right? Get a pen. Whatever. Fine. Get in there. 45th minute going into half. Get a break off of a bad pass from them. Score again. 4 2. 4-2. Hey, T- turning the tides a little bit. We win the game 6-5. to five. <laughs> We come back from down 4-0 when we're crying, laughing on the floor. These two in shambles. Great day. Just wanted to come on here and say, off chance one of you is listening 200, uh, two hours, 15 minutes into this. Get fucked. <laughs> that, that, that was the whole point of my story. Just, hey, hey, 4-0. Four, Marcus Morris did what, what you can't do. 3-0, 4-0. See you later. Goodbye. Hey. There you Bro. go. Ruined yeah, somebody's to. day. <clears throat> had to. Had to. Speaking of video games, made World Series on MLB The Show. Yes, sir. Easy work. <clears throat> Love to I, see it. I would <laughs> hate to I would hate to play me and MLB The Show right now. <laughs> I go on stretches of like, holy shit, what's wrong with me? Or I would hate to play me, and I'm in the hate to play me stretch right now. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> that rocks. Uh, I then played Brian in UFC. Brian is better at UFC than me. Knocked me out. Then played Brian in 2K. Uh, you know how you do randoms in 2K? <clears throat> yeah. Like, right around. I randomed current NBA teams. Got the Jazz. He randomed all-time teams. Got the Celtics. We did you not finish Did not finish the game, but I, I was, in fact, up at, by four once Danny took over the sticks as well. So I, I was uh, <clears throat> feeling all right. Colin Sexton was popping off a little bit. Can't lie. <laughs> Him and Laurie Marketing were cooking. Bill Russell can't keep up with Colin Sexton, all I'm saying. That's <laughs> I feel you low key should be able to. <laughs> Not in my Laterally. game. Not when I got the sticks. Okay. Not when I got it. Uh, I think that's all I got though. You got anything else? I'm sure I'll have stuff from like golf and everything else this weekend, but No, nah, I'm I'm good. Yeah, I don't have anything that I can really This might be the longest podcast we've ever posted, just for no fucking reason at all. Like, what do you mean for no, no reason? reason? We did a free no, no, agency like, thing. I know no... free agency, but like, it, it, usually when it goes this long, like everything we've ever had go over two hours, just had a guest. And because so we talked and we also talked to a guest. Oh, like I just see. us chatting, us just yapping for two hours. But anyways, Probably appreciate y'all for your... Better at this now. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. But maybe, maybe, <laughs> hopefully the two hour time doesn't turn people away. Um, appreciate y'all for tuning in. 
make sure to leave a like subscribe to how about them celtics putting out videos content every single day for y'all on the channel uh and yeah i'll let sam wrap it up hey thank you very much for listening and watching make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads who would want to miss a two hour episode not me uh full pods tuesday thursday sunday game recaps when there are games the morning after and then other videos in between again the bell will keep you posted for free agency we'll be doing streams and stuff too it's really weird with the july schedule because we're going to be traveling and then traveling separate and we'll see what happens but we'll probably do stuff uh you can also find us on spotify and apple all pods and game recaps will be there so follow us they'll go to your feed leave a five-star review we'd appreciate it email us hbtcpod at gmail.com all of your free agency thoughts can go there. Ratless can go there. Anything else about the show, send them in. We'll read them during the show. We appreciate it. Socials are at How About Them Seas for Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook's the name of the pod. Streams are there. They're on YouTube. They're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is Jack's Money NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. <laughs>